so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I am Chris Benoit, and my family is fucking dead. I'm teasing. <laughs> Jesus Woo, Christ. baby. I just popped a cold one. <laughs> and these Corona NAs go down easy, baby. <laughs> Run it back. <laughs> I'm Michael fucking Rainey. Welcome to Little Stinkers here with Cal Donjala. Hello. AKA John Del Calo. Jacob from Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons. You know, I'm just busting your balls. That's something a, a kid that I used to work with uh, used to say to me all the time. He used to curse as loud as he possibly could in the hallway, and then he'd pop into my office and say, I'm just busting your balls. <laughs> what a cool kid. He was the man, yeah. Uh, no, I, I won't say the nickname I had for him because it would give away his last name, but uh, very cool kid, Keith. Getting pretty specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I missed that job. But I like this one. trouble for cursing? Yeah, I mean... Would you get a demerit if you cursed in the hallway? No, I mean, it was a school for special children, so, like, somebody would come out and say something to them. Yeah. I would never, though. But, a little cussing. If it's funny, Jake, let it fly, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little cussing. Yeah. (laughs) Now, guys, we just, uh, we spent some time talking about uh, Diddy Mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. Man, what a, what a twisted tale. Of get, tails getting twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Did yes. You, did you write that one while you were taking a piss earlier? I My brain just wrote it. <laughs> my brain just sent it to my tongue. Express mail. But man, that motherfucker, man. Ay, chihuahua. Not a good guy. Mm. No, a terrible guy. A, a lot of disgusting shit alleged. And uh, I hope we get to tonight's episode because uh, this is... You're going to feel fired up after this one. This one is really empowering. Empowering. It's going to really make you pronounce your R's in a different way. <laughs> and I can corroborate it's that. Going to, it's going to corroborate ev- every unsavory feeling you have about the government. <laughs> and it's going to really uh, make you uh, uh, really appreciative for your, for your civil liberties. So uh, without further ado, please flip that coin, John. So I guess I'll it. flip the coin then. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, I was up late watching those stink, those little practical jokers last night. (laughs) Hey, you're watching little stinkers? Whoa. (laughs) I got a lot to say about the guys today. Oh, I can't wait. I hope fate is on my side. Please let me talk about the boys. Yeah. We have a fun one, John. I promise you this is fun. Okay. I believe you. I think every now and again, we need to cleanse the palate. Get rid of all the doom and gloom. Yeah. And just... It's been a lot lately. Focus on some destruction and suicide. So this... A fall- nice change of pace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, refreshing. Yeah. A real breath of smog. Uh, this gentleman that I'm referring to that we're going to talk about tonight, Jake, um, his name is Marvin Hemeyer. He's the driver of the Killdozer. Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the guy's name was Marvin. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, a real, uh, very interesting dude. I know very little about this situation, but I know a little bit. It's kind of nuts. There was a Netflix, uh, a show that was on Netflix. It's on uh, Amazon Prime now. Okay. And if anybody's watching this that wants to watch a documentary, um, it's called uh, fucking uh, Tread. And it's it's 89 minutes, which is my ideal watching length for anything. What a length. That's awesome. And (laughs) just under that 90, baby. Mm, Yeah. Love the length. And it, it is nuts, man. Oh, my God. Take me back, baby. All I know about this guy is he threw himself a little one-man parade on Main Street. Incredible, dude. It's watching the footage, listening to his audio leading up to it, listening to other people's accounts, like the people that he had beef with, the people that were just townspeople that really didn't have a dog in the fight. I mean, it really it got me riled up. And, Jake, objectively speaking, do you believe that I am easy to rile up? Objectively, I'm going to say no. Yes. On a scale of, all right, on a scale of Catatonia to Mexican day labor on payday. 
Okay, I would say you're a perceived Polish migrant and uh, closer to Mexican day laborer. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. I'll never I can get a little riled up. I don't know what objectively means, but the answer is yes. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the honesty. But, uh, yeah, this story got me riled up, man. And I knew of it, but I didn't know much about it. <laughs> but, man, it will get the fucking juices flowing. And, Jake, I know it doesn't take much to get those juices flowing in you. I can squirt, smell squirt. juices right now. I, I can Rod see him leaking Rod through his pants, I'm marinating, man. baby. He's got, the, uh, he's got a camel back for his pants. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing juices Keeping we speak. Keeping them moist. <laughs> But Marvin was born in, in Castlewood, South Dakota, in October 28, 1951. That's a weird place to be born. Sounds nice, though, doesn't it? Sounds uh, sounds like fresh air. Yeah, Sounds like a lot of space. It's just such a vastly different upbringing. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere where there's space and air mm -hmm. just seems very foreign to me. There were also cows. It was a dairy farm, Jake. Yum. Would you grow attached to cows if you had to care for them? Oh, God, yeah. Would you kiss on them? <laughs> oh, 100%. Get a where, little sloppy with them kisses. Where would you kiss them? Just on the nape <laughs> of their neck. Ew. <laughs> would you feel compelled to kiss an udder just so you knew what it felt like no, on your lips? No. Have you ever milked a cow? No. I have. How did it feel? Exactly like you wanted it to. <laughs> <laughs> um... Take me from a uh, tactile perspective. Uh, can you describe the uh, the touch to me? It is very similar to filling a rubber glove with milk, but there's just more milk to be released. <laughs> All right, so John, I'm going to ask you this: He's milking if, the prostate. What you do is you squeeze at the top, okay, of the udder closest to the little pouch, uh -huh. and you bring it down. Mm -hmm. Squeeze down. It's like getting right. that last little bit of jet out, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, if I were to get on all fours across uh, the furniture here and I took my shirt off, could you milk my titty and see if it will bring you back? Sure. Okay. Oh, my God. He's actually doing it. Yeah, of course he's actually doing it. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I think I didn't know I was going to touch the man's a, tit. Should we lay a tarp down? Oh, these right are now? nice. Oh, man. Oh, Touch my thigh and it nice. moves. Oh, man. He's holding... <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty similar, man. He's yeah. getting riled up. He's right. He's all the way up the scale. Ew, gross. Say, <laughs> so, was that dust? That's oh, nasty. <laughs> Did it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine being a fucking cow, buddy. Well, I mean, it's a whole different pleasure center they're working with here. <laughs> the pleasure is, center? You're talking about where point, I worked buddy. in high school? <laughs> We're actually out of that. We'll be restocked <laughs> next weekend. Uh, but did it bring you back? It, it, I'm not lying. Immediately did. Okay. Did you want to name me? <laughs> no, I'm not going to get attached. <laughs> I'm going to eat your ass soon. Oh. <laughs> and that's the clip. <laughs> and that's what they're showing in court when I lose custody of my child. Mm. That's how chocolate milk is made. <laughs> but uh, Marvin Heemeyer grew up on a dairy farm, Jake. Uh, by all indications, had a lovely family, mother, father, sister, two brothers. He was intelligent, but he was not good at school. Were you guys good in school? Yeah, by force. Mm -hmm. I had to get good grades, but like not, was never like straight A's. By force, do you mean priest dick in your butt while you did math? No, I mean, like, if I got bad grades, I wouldn't be allowed to do social things. I got you. Jake, yeah, you? I was, I was okay. I was, yeah, middle of the road. Yeah. yeah. A lot of C's or mostly B's? No, mostly B's. <laughs> Good. A lot of B's. And one big D. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets one big D. <laughs> if you're in Catholic school. <laughs> yeah. He was not good in school, but he was an intelligent man. And it's weird because I think when you don't do well in school, there's the inclination to think that you're a total fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't seem like that that followed him outside of school. Although he did have a teacher that told him he would never amount to anything. Jesus Christ. Look at him. We're talking on, on, a, on a, about him on a <laughs> yeah. podcast now. So and, you, and eat your heart out, bitch. Where's that That's bitch? Right. Yeah. He's probably sucking a teat on a fucking farm somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
he graduated his high school class. How many people do you think were in his high school class in Castlewood, South Dakota? Twelve. I'm going to play the game of going 15. 29. That's uh, the entire graduating, the entire graduating class. class. Yeah. And he graduated 28th out of 29. <laughs> he wasn't really trying. What would that other guy do? Fucking run a forklift off a cliff? He was a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> so did not do well in school uh, When he graduated he ended up joining the Air Force When he was in the Air Force He ended up getting stationed in Denver, Colorado Beautiful place, place yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool You've both been to Denver, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeff, you been there? It's beautiful no. It's um, it's like Philly in the sense that it's um, very different Did you guys say that the um, <laughs> Air <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. Um, did you guys say that there was a nickname for the Air Force recently? I didn't uh, say it. That like makes them lesser than, like the lesser than uh, military. No, mm-hmm. something about like I wouldn't say that. I think they call them desk force. Maybe. Oh fuck off! Somebody said that because they like don't really fly or something. I don't know. Who said that? Somebody who's on the no fly list. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. There was a joke when I was in the Marines that they said, uh, technically the Marines are uh, a department of the Navy. Okay. And we were instructed to say, if anybody from the Navy ever mentions that to you, say, yeah, the men's department. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it either. (laughs) Yeah, I was eating it. (laughs) So Marvin Hemeyer joins the Air Force. He's stationed in Denver. He he develops a love for Colorado. It is a lovely state, man. Can't go wrong there. Out of any place that I've I've driven throughout Colorado, any place that I've been has really been, uh, really uh, made me wiggle below the belt. I'm wiggling right now even thinking about it, Jake. Man. Mm. A little Royal Junction happening. I do. I got. I got a. Uh, we're about to. Uh, <laughs> we're about to see some red rocks in a minute, bro. That's that much. You want me to try to milk you again? I do not. <laughs> okay. Um. That's one and done for me. <laughs> I meant from a different place. <laughs> uh oh! You're turning this dairy farm into a fairy farm. Jake, get control of him, please. <laughs> you think? You think fucking Jake can do shit to me? <laughs> Jake could bend you over that table. <laughs> <laughs> and take your asshole virginity uh, at will. I would never do that to you, John. <laughs> I just like knowing that you could. <laughs> Jake, what is something you would say to a man whose cheeks you were taking? <laughs> How did that get in there? <laughs> Wait, that's that what you would say? Go there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't say anything because it wouldn't be happening. Oh, oh come yeah. on. Yeah, you've... I, it wouldn't be happening. Use your disp- just suspension of disbelief. <laughs> now, you say something horny like, uh, God's going to be so mad about this. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no God that likes watching this. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't God bowling, bitch. <laughs> mm, damn, that motherfucker put up the bumpers on you. <laughs> God damn. Mike's got yeah. it. Okay, all right. Hey, guy. <laughs> Wait, this is while you're already having sex? You're saying hello? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, dude, it's, he kicks in the door, and then he asks uh, if he's welcome in. <laughs> but, uh, hey, guy. Jake, you're about to unload into a man. <laughs> you're going to say hey, guy, to him? Yeah, I think it's funny. <laughs> All right, yeah. I like a little, I like a little sense of humor yeah. in the bedroom. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I always get a pretty big laugh when I pull this dick out. <laughs> mm. Wait, let me get a tissue. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So while Jake's busy getting carrot top. <laughs> Um, I don't even know why I brought that up because Marvin Hemeyer, <laughs> he gets out of the Air Force. And when he gets out of the Air Force, Jake, he's very good at welding. Um, 
he, he's known uh, for repairing mufflers. He's also becomes known around town for uh, welding bumpers around people's snowmobiles. They look very cool. Like he uh, makes his own or he takes it off of a car and attaches it? He'll, he'll uh, make his own and fashion it around a snowmobile where it might not previously have that. So it doesn't get all fucked up if you like yeah. happen to crash into a tree or something. That's a pretty cool uh, side gig. Yeah. 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 That's, I think that's how he made a lot of his income, which is people in town just saying, hey, go to Marv. They called him uh, Marv the Muffler Man. And I'm not making that up. <laughs> pretty cool name. It is, man. Has anybody ever called you anything cool? No. <coughs> Working on it. What do you think is coming down the pike? I, I have no idea. What do you think, John? You're in the hot seat, pussy. <laughs> I don't. Listen. I'm hot seat, hot my- seat pussy's pretty good. Go with that, Jake. <laughs> hot seat pussy. <laughs> Yeah, going to the Queens of the Stone Age concert tonight. Me, Mike, hot seat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I could deal with that. It's buy two, bring a pussy in with you, free. <laughs> <laughs> now make sure that pussy's in the hot seat, all right? <laughs> There's a cop checking at the entrance. Yeah, that pussy better be in a hot seat. Yeah. He is. <laughs> Now, in the mid '80s, uh, the beginning of of Marv's financial woes uh, start to uh, unravel. Jake, mm-hmm. uh, he leases some land, and uh, the people that he's leasing the land from go bankrupt, and Marv ends up losing fifty seven thousand dollars on this deal. After that, he also invests in a um, in in an apartment complex that ends up going belly up, and he loses a similar amount of money. Mm-hmm. So he's like six figures in the hole. Not far out of leaving the Air Force. And this is in Colorado? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, he gets involved in local politics. Uh, he's an advocate for gambling. And uh, so... Uh, I just say, I bet he is. Like, Oh, I like that. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I no. wasn't intentional. <laughs> I just think he wants to make some money. And he's going to win it all back. Yeah. That's, that's what it sounds like he wants. That's the way I think too, Jake. Jake, in 1992, he moves from Boulder. He's working. All right, so he's working for a company called Scotty's Mufflers. He ends up buying a branch of Scotty's Mufflers. He and a buddy go in on it. Uh, The shop goes belly up, but he's like, look, he's like, I know I can do this right if I have my own thing. So he moves from Boulder to a place called Grand County, buys himself 27 acres. He has a nice little cabin, and he has a hot tub right next to this cabin. Spends a lot of time in the hot tub, if you know what I'm talking about, Jake. Hot tub with me. Yeah. Hot tub, splishy splash. Oh wait, is uh is hot tub pussy like hot seat pussy? Is there another guy? Yeah, they're friends. That's <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> uh, what do hot tub pussy and hot seat pussy do when you guys get together? Just roll around in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just rolling. Just like a pig in slop, baby. <laughs> hey, Jeff, are you gonna co-sign that? I was going to say something that we're both hot or something. So we're trying to get cool. Very oh, like, that's good. You know, trying to cool down, turn yeah. the AC on. Yeah, you're rolling around, getting hot. You're foaming up that tub. Yo, it's all froth. <laughs> and the jets aren't on. <laughs> that hasn't been. Uh... Yeah, the repairman comes next Thursday <laughs> between eight and four. What a disgusting job. That's that's something that Mike Rowe would look into. Hot tub repairman? It, it, Semen remover? Yeah, I think I think hot tub repairman is code for just hot tub cleaner. Because, yeah. yeah. you know. Is that and, a hot tub's worst enemy is jizz? I would say a baby who crawls into it in the middle of the night. Gotta leave the cover on. You do? <laughs> on, the, on the baby or the hot tub? Cover up both of them. You gotta keep them separated. <laughs> But I could, you know, there's worse ways to die. I think about that in regards to like things that people typically view. Could have as- been an ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> if I had to list like my top five things that are listed as tragedies but aren't as tragic the more you think about them, I would go baby drowning in hot tub. You with me on this one? Not at all. Yeah. It's a very cool death. For who? For the baby, like, you imagine getting to heaven and you're just like, oh, you're like, what's his name? Edmund Kemper's mom goes to heaven. She, first of all, she's headless in heaven. 
And they're like, what the fuck happened to you? Like, yeah, my son cut my head off. Imagine how embarrassing that would be. If you're a baby that ends up sneaking into a hot tub and you drown, that's so cool. Like, when you get to heaven, you're wearing a little bathing suit, and they're just like, whoa, I didn't know the pool was open up here. They're like, it's not, man. I just came out of the hot tub. So the baby put a bathing suit on itself? He did. And the baby's a he. This this is a very self-sufficient baby, which surprises me that he wasn't able to make it out of the hot tub. Jake, can I get can, in your hoodie, too? <laughs> can babies talk in heaven? They can communicate. So it's like... Don't it, get distracted by keys. <laughs> it's a language that uh, that's understood but doesn't have to be spoken. Like Latin. Oh, I'm not familiar. Latin, isn't that a dead language? Okay. Well, yeah, that would be. So you can read it, but you can't speak it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what dead hot tub babies in heaven do. Uh, another tragedy that comes to mind that isn't as tragic the more you think about it, uh, the JFK assassination. The man died in a convertible with everybody cheering for him. Man, that's how I wanted to go in the foam pit. <laughs> Get your head blown off yeah. while your family's there. <laughs> Cocaine heart attack would be third. That's a nice one. He's going to finish the list. Uh, I would say heroin dick suck is the fourth one. Hero- so you're overdo- overdosing on heroin. Wow. Yes. Doing, performing or receiving? Receiving. So you yes. come at the same time? Not even come. It's just, oh. yeah. Come and go. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mike, finish it strong. I would say burning alive in the Great White Fire because you get to see your favorite band and as your final notes are sounding, so are theirs. Wow. It's almost poetry for fucking idiots. (laughs) (laughs) Now, back to the show. (laughs) All right. So he moves to Granby, Colorado, And at an auction, he buys a two-acre plot, okay? And there's a guy guy there named Cody Duchef who wants the plot. And he and a business partner, they're attempting to buy this plot. And I think they have like $35,000 to spend on it at auction. They don't anticipate anybody else being there that would want it. So they're just like, yeah, we got this. But then... Fucking Marv Meyer starts raising his hand, and I think he goes up to like forty five or forty six thousand dollars. He's there to play ball. He is, man, and uh, he's he's juiced to the gills, and he's swinging for the fences. Not only playing ball, brother, and he gets this plot. Nice, yeah, man. And Cody does not take kindly to it. Uh, it was a uh, it was forty five thousand dollars. He wins it with because Cody's fucked out of this. Cody has a cement business, and Jake he wanted that. He he wanted he wanted that so fucking bad. He he could taste it. You ever want something so bad you can taste it, Jake? Anything in my Uber Eats app right now. <laughs> he wants it so bad he can taste it so much so that he gets in Marv's face and he starts screaming at him about the plot of land. And he's pissed, and a lot of people, other people are, are apparently pissed that Marv is an outsider coming into this town and buying oh. up land. And that has more to do with it than anything, I think. Gotta love that. If you ain't from here, not allowed here. Mm-hmm. I love people who uh, have the attitude that you're not allowed to move anywhere. Yeah, it is odd. I fucking hate that shit. You really, you're going to live in your dead grandmother's house your entire life around mm-hmm. the corner from the rest <laughs> of your family. Grow the fuck up, man. <laughs> Do dead grandmoms haunt those houses usually? You can't fucking shake a stick without hitting a meatball in those places. A ghost meatball. Ghost meatball. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm going to go to the old Wawa that's closed, <laughs> trying to get a ghost meatball. Man, I would donate to that Kickstarter movie right now. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Cosby is coming back back to play the <laughs> lead role. <laughs> I was um I was yawning. Can I can you tell me that again? Um no. <laughs> <laughs> I said Bill Cosby is coming black. That sounds like a Medea movie. Should be. Maybe it's in the works. Um, Jake, Marv Hemeyer. So he takes this land and he builds his new, he puts his new Marv's mufflers business in there. Okay. He's also living there as well? 
No, well, he ends up living there, but he has his own cab and he's got the hot tub. So mm-hmm. that's his place of residence. But he has his business in there. And almost initially, they start hitting him with zoning issues in relation to his uh, his sewer lines. The town is against him. Yes, they're against him. Yeah. And they're just like, ah, it turns out you got to connect to the uh, to the sewer main, which is hundreds of yards away. And he built this place uh, from the ground up, this muffler business? I don't know if the garage was always there or not. Hey, why I mean, do you need two acres to run a muffler business, first of all. Yeah. yeah. Seems like he could have operated on one sixteenth of that land. Yeah, I don't know if the garage was already there or not, but uh but yeah, to the point where they want and they talk about this in the movie Tread. They actually show a diagram of it. So it says like how they need it. They need the um the the new uh su- the new pipes to link up mm-hmm. to the town sewer line. And it's such a fucking pain in the ass. And uh, <clears throat> next in the plot next to him is his nemesis, uh, Cody Ducheff. He runs a cement business over there. That's why Cody uh, wanted that to land. Expand his yeah, he was trying plot. to expand. Yeah. And that yeah. was the basis of his issue. It's like he wanted it. Yeah, that was one thing. But also it would benefit him because it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. So Cody puts his business right. He has his business right there. And... Uh, what's his name? Fucking once all this shit with the vo- fucking zoning starts, Marv's like, you're clearly doing this to fuck with me. They're just like, yeah, man, that's that's how it works, man. You, you know the rules. So it's like he's got to get an easement from Cody Duchef, which means he needs his permission to even put this in if he wants to do that. And Cody's like, yeah, we're not fucking doing that. So if he doesn't have that, he can't put the shit in. And therefore, he's noncompliant with the zoning restrictions. So he's kind of fucked no matter what he does. And he doesn't have the option to go septic for this plumbing issue? I don't think so. Man, Cody, he's a real ball buster. He really yeah. is. He looks like a real jack off too. Does he? Yeah. It's it's an old man named Cody, which is something I've never seen. <laughs> yeah, Cody's usually die in their forties. They do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're buried with a fucking with a, a fox racing hat on with a, with a <laughs> flat brim. <laughs> so this goes before uh the sewer board. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> yes. There's a sewer board. And the guy that's the head of the sewer board is a guy named Ron Thompson. And guess what? He just happens to be a friend of Cody and his business partner, Gus Harris. So Small town. It is, man. It's not just a Toby Keith song. So Marv knows he's fucked at this point. So he knows. All right. There's, there's an agreement. To fucking, uh, there's an offer of forty thousand dollars to Marv Hemeyer for the two acres, and uh, they're able to like kind of work out a tentative deal, but then they back out of it, and he's still unconnected to these sewer lines. So these issues are persisting, and he cannot continue on with building his business until he. Oh, dude, they they fucking uh, they start fining him. So I forget what the fine is. It was maybe like, it was like a hundred bucks a day or something for every day that he's Jesus. non-compliant. Yeah, it's fucking nuts, man. Yeah, that's... Even without operating the business? He's oh, not... no, he's still running the business. Okay, with just no plumbing. I, I don't I don't know how the fucking plumbing's working out, but like he's just not in compliance with the zoning yeah. rules. Damn, dude, that's like what HOAs do to people, right? Like, like Yeah, they don't like you. They just day. fucking... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You painted your mailbox purple. Oh, they're brutal, man. Like when I yeah. when I lived in a townhouse, it was just always a fucking issue. Yeah. Where it was just like, uh, you got this in the front yard. This can't be in the fucking front yard. It's an HOA. What is that? Uh, it's the the oh, house the association. Ho- yeah, and it's like we had to be in compliance. Even though we were renting, it's like the lady, our landlord, would get the fucking letters and she would pass it on to us. Yeah. And it would just be like dumb shit out front. Yes. Where it would just be like a fucking yeah. a garden gnome or something. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, they come through to cut the grass on this day and it's in the way. If you're an HOA operator and you're a fan of this show. No, don't say that. They're probably just hardworking guys. He's taking orders. Mm -hmm. You know who else was just taking orders? (laughs) Domino's Jake. That's who was taking orders. Oh, man. So hungry. So this beef between Cody and his Uh, concrete business. Come on. Is he even hungry? (laughs) So they're playing a game of chicken, Jake. <laughs> oh my god! Help me. <laughs> Open up the apps on my phone quick. They just Beef cannot. And chicken? What is it? Fajitas? 
Jake, they're playing chicken and this beef is persisting and they just can't get pasta each other. <laughs> they just can't, cannot get pasta this issue. It's a Jamaican, but I like it. The Jamaican jerk chicken. Oh, my God. With pasta. Yeah, these are hot runnings, brother. <laughs> okay, that's uh, kind of gross. Yeah, okay. I'm not that hungry anymore, but. So now uh, there's a there's a town hall meeting, and Marv Heemeyer shows up, and he's complaining about Cody, saying the concrete business, which isn't far from a residential neighborhood, and he's claiming that all the fucking dust and debris is being pushed downwind toward these homes, which is leading to fucking um, air pollution, noise pollution, potential water pollution. And it's like he's got his shit together, so he is making some good points. Yeah. And eventually that leads to um, the town saying, like, all right, we're going to allow him to continue to operate there. However, we are going to require these certain um, compliance issues from Cody. That fires Cody up, so he's got an even bigger beef with him, Jake. I'm sorry to yeah. make you even hungry. That's fine. You didn't deserve that, man. Bigger beef? Is that oh, even on the God. menu? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that was an option. So by November 2002, he's still not in compliance with the sewage, sewage issues. And he's got to write a check for uh, close to thirty five hundred dollars. Wow! And uh, Marv's dealing with the wet bandits. And because he feels as though they're fucking him over in the memo line on the check, he addresses it to the cowards and liars department. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> got their ass. Yeah. Zap. Now they send the fucking check back to him, and they say, "Oh, your amount was wrong. You got to write us a different check." So he's fucking furious at this point, man. He has to write it again in the memo line. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of this, too, aside from the sewage issues, they're hitting him with scrap metal fines because he keeps all this metal Man. on the side and out back of his fucking garage. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, yeah, it's a problem for everybody around here. So they're clearly fucking with this poor yeah. guy. Um, in 2003, so eventually he's just like, all right, maybe I will get out of here, man. So eventually oh, no. he, they're just like, they're going to hold an auction. So for not only his business, but the physical items in his garage. Is so, this like a foreclosure or is this just like a pre foreclosure kind of like a, I don't know, Jake. Okay. So I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know if it's foreclosure or if he's choosing to do this and just saying, all right, I fucking give up at this point. Yeah. However, everything, everything that's being sold, all the physical items are purchased, but his business is not. So technically he still owns the business. So, He's still getting hit with all these fines, even though like he's essentially waving the white flag. <sighs> yeah. And they're just all the people have banded together to just fuck with him. God damn, they're still hitting him with the fines every day. Yeah. And he goes to the guy, so um the guy that was the sewer board head. <laughs> uh so the sewer board head guy, um, he dies. Mr. Manhole. <laughs> yes. Luther Manhole. <laughs> His sons, uh, uh, the, the sons of uh, the mayor, all right, the sons of the mayor, Dick Thompson. So the Thompson family is a prominent family in Granby. There's even a street named after him. It's just generations to generations of people who have lived in this town, and they've just brought up, bought a property all over the place. They have a construction business, so they're wealthy people. They're wealthy and influential. So he goes to the sons of Dick Thompson, who's passed away, and he says, your dad is responsible for me losing $300,000, and I want my fucking money. And uh, one of the kids uh, explicitly tells him to suck his dick. Whew. Yeah. And this is on a recording. So Marv Heemeyer made a series of audio recordings when he could feel himself like, making the decision that he's ultimately going to make, saying, like, look, this is why I did all this fucking shit. Wow. And in the summer of 2002, he buys a Komatsu, a Komatsu bulldozer at an auction in California. Whoa, dude. He was looking all over for a bulldozer then. I don't think he had this in mind yet. I think it was just, he just liked buying, like, cool shit. And, and he's out 300 grand. Why not spend <laughs> yes, another 50? Yeah. But here's why I don't think he, he had that in mind yet, because he when he gets it back to um, to the site where his business is, he puts a for sale sign on it. So he just thinks he's got a good deal. Oh, he can, like, he got a good deal on something that somebody yeah. in town could buy it. Flipping dozers. Yeah, Flipping which dozers. is a pretty sick move. Yeah, Nobody fucking buys it. Damn. 
in the town of people who hate his guts? <laughs> don't say. But somebody's got to like ha- got to want a good deal. And also, when you watch that documentary, it's clear that everybody in the town doesn't have it in for him. Mm-hmm. But the powers that be, though, yes, they yeah. all do. Yeah. You ever I, seen I, this I, movie called Run with Patrick Dempsey from the eighties? Doesn't ring a bell. He gets in a bar fight with this guy. He's in a town that a small town that he's not from, and gets in a bar fight with a guy. And uh, accidentally, the guy dies, mm-hmm. you know, by accident. And then it's like the powerful guy. It's the Thompson's son okay. in this town. And then the entire town, police force, everybody's after this guy. Gives me the vibes of that. Okay. Where it's just like, there's nothing I can do to win in this situation. Literally everybody is against me. Okay. Um, And it's fucking sad. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I feel very bad for this guy. Well, dude, there's a movie, I forget the fucking name, it's a Vin Diesel movie that sounds similar to the, that. The movie is not sad, I'm saying uh, the Marvin's situation. situation is yeah. sad, yeah. Uh, th- but there's a Vin Diesel movie that's similar to uh, to Marv's plate that he has a VHS copy of, and he ends up watching that when he puts the wheels into motion on his uh, little devious little plan. What Chronicles movie is Riddick. it? I can't remember yeah. the name of it. Okay. Uh, but I, in the end of it, like, his wife dies, and it's like, he's kind of stuck at the everybody, and he comes out on top. It's not Triple X 3, no, no. Return of Xander Cage, is it? No, it wasn't anything that I had ever recognized before. Um, I mean, it, it, I think one of the Fast and Furious was out by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what else had he been It wasn't in? really that, that big yet. I've, I've yeah, this is like a... The pacifier? When, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Dark after... <ending. laughs> Um, it's like how Saddam was a fan of like the yeah he loved all that shit movies yeah Boiler Room nah no Babylon so, AD Find Me uh, Guilty two thousands oh he was in Saving all of these are two thousands yeah that? I don't know man maybe it was the Iron Giant knock Let's around say it's guys the Iron Giant <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> yeah. well, uh, Marv kind of is an Iron Giant and he, he likes welding metals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a man apart. That might be it. No. So I feel like I've seen that cover before. That's, probably, That's how Diddy tears a man. That's 2000. Oh, is it 2000? Year 2000? 2003. Cartel, drug wars along the border. Doesn't sound like that. that. Mm. No. Yeah, maybe I'll think of it. Maybe I Whatever will. it is, it's a weird actor to model anything after. That's yeah. for sure. Thank you. Yes. All right. So everybody's fucking with him. So. You know, the, every everybody's conspiring against him. Uh, Cody's business partner, Gus Harris, he agrees uh, to um, to buy the land from Marv Hemeyer for forty grand. He never signs the paperwork, and uh, so that deal never comes to fruition. And Would have lost money on that either way. Like he paid forty five for yeah, the he land. did. Yeah, but it just would have been like, all right, this is going to be done. Yeah, um, eventually. So the the concrete company that was next door was sold to Cody Duchev. By Gus Harris, and that's how, how that's how Cody came into it. Oh, uh-huh. uh, okay. All right. So to clarify, I just wanted to add that. So he didn't come from the business; he bought it. So Cody was already in his own business, but okay. this was just like gotcha. okay. a new space for them. And so he buys Marv buys the fucking dozer, and there's no buyers. The summer of 2003 comes along, and he starts living in his warehouse. And uh, when a guy lives in a warehouse, Jake. It is the beginning of the end. Yes, it truly is, man. Is. It it truly is, Jake. And he starts thinking like, all right, all right. You know, how can I get back at these motherfuckers, man? So he's like, all right, I got an idea for a kill dozer. I have um, a tank <laughs> and the ability to weld. Well, dude, on top of this too, on the audio tapes, he talks about this where he's like, look, he's like, there was a half inch to spare in the width of the garage getting this fucking dozer into there. He's like, if God didn't want me to fo- go follow through with this plan, why would he allow me to get this dozer into the fucking garage? And why does he make garage doors dozer sized? <laughs> <laughs> that is tough logic to be yeah. right there. But uh, he's cutting up steel and making like a suit of armor for this bulldozer. On top of that, too. He's mixing homemade concrete, so he's making, like, a fucking steel sandwich. So it's, like, steel, concrete, more steel, Hungry. and he's affixing it to the bulldozer. So there's nothing that's going to get through this fucking thing. He's putting um, 
the steel is a half inch thick to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Put it away, Jake. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he's uh, there's a lift that's going to put it in place when the time comes. So this thing is like suspended in the air. Man, as as he pieces it together, he's got it like on a lift. He's in the lab. He really is, man. Yeah. He's cooking. There's there's five cameras affixed to the dozer. Um, there's compressed air which is pointed at the cameras because he knows debris is going to eventually be flying onto it and clouding uh, his sight lines because he's using these five cameras to be able to see when he's driving. So he's not in the kill dozer. He he is oh, going to be in the kill dozer, okay. but it's all tanked off. So yeah. yes, it's interesting that you mentioned that because initially they thought that somebody was radio controlling it. Yeah, but he puts compressors in. Where every now and again, with the flick of a button, it would just shoot away all the debris that which was covering the security cameras. That is yeah. pretty fucking Next slick, level man. Thing. Yeah. How, how much do you that have is. to hate somebody <laughs> to to get to this degree of planning, man? Seriously. Can well, you th- if the cameras get dust on them, I'm gonna need something to blow the dust off. So. And also, instead of just making it remote controlled, he's like, I want to feel the crunch. <laughs> 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 like, that's what's so crazy about it. <laughs> Oh god! He wants anything. the satisfaction. Sounds like a Snickers commercial. Oh yes, baby! <laughs> I hate you guys right now. <laughs> oh man, or when you fuck your pop pop's corpse. <laughs> that make you hungry, Jake? <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> Snap it to a gram jam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hungry again. <laughs> and on top of this, too, there's three inch bulletproof plastic. Over the cameras. God damn. So nothing's going to fucking fuck these things up. People throw eggs at it. Oh my God. I never thought of that, Jake. Eggs take out. What an unfortunate <laughs> thing to happen on Dozen Egg Night. <laughs> <laughs> what a pool. Classic. I just watched that yeah. a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's so good. Um, that reminds me, we should throw eggs at some point soon. Yeah, we should. It's been a while, you know, hasn't I, it? I told you when that. did we ever do it? I mean, I did on my own, but... Recently? You no, made it seem like ago. we had done it at some point together yeah. in the past. We've thrown things together. Certainly. Yeah. But I want to throw some eggs at some targets, you know? People or things? Things to start. I told you I was targeted in an attack here when? in our town. When? I was leaving in an open mic that used to exist. And I was standing on the corner talking to a good buddy, Chris Stolen. Okay. And we're standing on the corner, and a car full of teenagers pull up right in front of us. You know where the uh, reef is that that um, where they sell fish and stuff like that? Yeah. They stop, like dead stop, right there as they're turning right off Lincoln. Oh, my God. Jake. And they're like, now. And we're like, huh? And then they just start throwing eggs at us, point blank range. And then they sped off. They missed us completely. It was Dude. like Pulp Fiction. Like, look, I swear to God. You would if if you had to walk in the door to your wife covered in egg as a as a grown ass man, Dude. you would have to kill these fucking kids, man. <laughs> Honey, do you think I can get this on the stove in time? <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even yell like y'all been scrambled or anything like that. No, they just oh, let's go, let's go, and then they took off. Did you think about chasing them? No, they were in a car, Mike. <laughs> 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 Would you have chased them? They got for, eggs for several blocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just to, like Terminator doing oh, yeah. it. After. There are a lot of stoplights there. Jim. Yeah, yeah. You keep trucking, dude. Yeah, you're you'll get to run one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Man, yeah, we gotta throw some eggs, man. We we sure do. Yeah, we'll get there. We will. Maybe we'll yeah. do it in Boston. Yeah, yeah. that'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, Boston Tea Party. I yeah. don't much like the Red Sox. Boston <gasps> Egg Party. You <Little> bastard. <laughs> Just go throw eggs at Fenway. No, the green mile. People, God. people with Boston has a green mile. Yeah, <laughs> people with Boston. Little bastard. Yeah, anybody that I can beat up that's wearing a Boston hat. So, children. Not many people. Who? Oh. Said not many people. I said children. Oh, before you said it. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot. I got you something. <laughs> <laughs> you got him another one? Wow. Whoa. I forgot there was a two was for one so deal nice at of you. He did give me a, his Taco Bell tonight. So that was very nice of him. Did I, it look like it was wrapped by the restaurant itself? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff has it's all to say, skateboard <laughs> payback. Payback for the kickflip. Kick hey. And you did eat the whole thing? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stomach's you ate your Taco Bell? What? Did you eat that food over there? Yeah. That was you're the quietest eater I've ever been around. <laughs> I ate that oh, like during the face. live stream. Oh my god, man. <laughs> did you? Yeah. This wow, bingo. Man. That was impressive. Chalupa is a quiet meal. But it's got it's wrapped up. <laughs> Chalupa is actually Spanish for quiet. <laughs> Jeff, you eat like an Asian sex slave. Like you my God, man, I'm impressed. <laughs> I do it for the show. Thank you, man. <laughs> well, you can make more noise, brother. Go for it, man. We we have a very very loose rapper policy here. You guys ever stinkers. get caught moaning while you're eating? I caught? squirt while I eat, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Moaning's not the issue. It's the oh, juice I expel. Like one of those. You might have a good sandwich. You're like, oh my god. I dance if something's really good, but I don't really make noise. Okay. Are you a moaner, John? I must have moaned at some point. Sure. Mm. I got one more free item to redeem from Taco Bell today, so I'll be hitting it again on the way home. It doesn't give you indigestion? Certainly it does. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, it had, I had it last night. It fucked my day off today. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you're going to like this. In December of 2003, Cody Duchef eventually gives a Marv Hemeyer a decent offer. How much do you think he offers him for his space? If it's a cent under $45,000, I'll be mad. 60000 He offers him $400,000. So it's nearly 10 times his investment. I think. He accepts it. Yeah. And uh, I might be able to leave town after that. That's a happy ending. Yeah. Seems like it could have been, but four months later, his father passes away, and Marv was very close with his father. And at this point, Marv is already convinced that he's following through with his plan. So he's thinking ahead so far that he knows that, all right, if I go through with this plan and I kill myself at the end of it, they're going to take what I want because of the damages I'm going to cause. They're going to take my money that I have. So before his dad dies... He gives his dad the $400,000, and when the dad dies, it's then given to his brothers and his sister. So they get to enjoy his money. Wow. Genius. Yeah, and he's like, I don't fucking need it anymore, and they're not going to fucking get it from me, so my brothers and sisters can enjoy it. I don't think we've ever covered somebody who has thought so far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. (coughs) Very, very uh, thoughtful dude. Just really planned everything. He thought of everything. He did. May 2004, the plan is almost ready, Jake. Now at this point, he's thinking of targets. He's thinking of uh, just businesses that he could hit. The electric company's one. The library is one. Uh, hardware store is one. The newspaper. Wait, uh, does he actually... I So I'm not familiar with this. Does he actually go through the town in this thing? Brother. All right. So his final tape that he makes, his final audio tape, he, he this is like hours and hours of audio that he leaves in a plastic bag. They recover all of it, and you can listen to it all. And a lot of it is included in the documentary that I mentioned. Uh, one of the last things he says is that sometimes reasonable men must do unreasonable things. Jesus Christ, I would get that tattooed <laughs> yeah, on baby. my back. <laughs> the lower back tattoo Jesus city, baby. Christ. <laughs> Next to no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin's a fucking hero so far. I'm not sure if he's yeah, he's the man killing anybody. He doesn't. In the end. Okay. He doesn't? Okay. Himself. But Okay. But Is- dude, he's making his hit hit list, Jake, and on Friday, June 4, 2004. I just like obviously you want to hit stuff that's owned by the town. Yes. Because they gave him such so the library, the electric company, all that shit. But then it's also like, yo, who at the hardware store gave him a bad you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. fucking overcharged him for some nails yeah. or some shit. <laughs> yeah. Well or the gave thing him is fucking side uh, eye when he walked in there. Well, John, so many of these people uh that are on these boards in town, they own local businesses. So course, it's yeah. like I'm gonna fucking ruin you. Do you know how small this town was? Was it less than like five thousand people? I shouldn't know how many square miles it is, but I'm looking for population over area. Yeah, I don't know, man. It is a town. What's that? It's Granby, Colorado. It is a town where everybody knows each other. Yeah, I I like uh, I like towns like that. I feel like it's mostly towns that are outside of like national parks mm-hmm. where I go to very small places. Yeah, and they need tourism. You know what I mean? So they're not mean to you. 
but they, like, but they're not happy you're there though either. They, they, I mean, if you move there, yeah, they probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have the same niceness. It's got a population of twenty one hundred people, so it's pretty small. Dude, that's yeah. less than my high school. Jesus, like my yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's wild. What did you just say? The area of the town on there, like where is it at? No, the square mileage. Oh, okay. All right, just throw a guess out. It's on the Wikipedia page, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's um, total area is 12,000 square miles. All right, so yeah, That's it's a big. nice, spacious. I mean, I'm sure everybody lives closer. There's probably a main street, and then people's properties yeah. encompass the rest of the area. I think one thing that could give you, like, uh, Perhaps the best context is there's one stoplight in town. Okay. So it's that kind of place. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, when he goes on this rampage, he takes out that one stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> Complete chaos. <laughs> it's dude. the best. Dude, and you could, you could watch video of this shit, and it is so fucking funny. So Friday, June 4th, 2004 is the day. And uh, he shaves his head. He puts on a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a little fun Yeah pretty you know? cool man uh, So he died in a Hawaiian shirt Bro oh my god man Now that's living It really that, is man yeah. <laughs> Dude there's a um, There's there's a uh, a Militia that used him As kind of like a um, You know kind of like a, a deity Like they're called the Boogaloo movement He spawned a movement Well I think white supremacy had more to do with it than anything else, but huh? like he's a, f- a figure that's referenced by them, and one of their uh, one of their. I, guys, I imagine they also have reverence for um, the Idaho. Oh no the doubt, precursor to yeah. Waco. What no was doubt, that? yeah, uh, yeah. Ruby Ridge, yes, Ruby yeah. Ridge. yeah, yeah. And there was one of the guys, uh, Steve Carrillo was his name, who he got in a gunfight with cops. And then he said something like uh, his, or he wrote it on the hood of a card. Said, "I became unreasonable," which was a reference to Marv Hemeyer. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean the anti-establishment mm-hmm. essence of it. Yeah, it's something wonderful. I can get behind. Yeah, uh, definitely. Punk rock. Seems like they uh, crossed a line that I can't get behind uh, with their group uh, <laughs> slogan or yeah. Uh, yeah, lifestyle true. or whatever. But man. <laughs> They would get you though. I mean, it's, mission statement. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. We're unreasonable, and we wear Hawaiian shirts. It's like sign me up, brother. Yeah. It's like, all right. Well, we also believe that we are the supreme race. It's okay, like, you know what? Right. Is there more? Call? I'm gonna pick up some. Mun- you guys like Munchkins? <laughs> Is right. Duncan close? Right. I will be right back. Oh, Three- only 45 miles. I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, these are guys that go nuts for donuts, man. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, all right, Friday, June 4th, 2004, it's go time. Shaves his head, puts on his best Hawaiian shirt. He gets in the dozer. As soon as this fucking thing is lowered into place, that's it. He's not getting out of it. He's got a ton of gas. Wow. So this can go on forever. Did he like weld it shut from the inside or something? Or like it just... It was, I think it was just so heavy that yeah. there's no way it's coming back up. That's fucking crazy. Wow. That was the lid, the yeah. cap to him. Yes. Okay. And do you think perhaps Cody saw him... Outside practicing Dude. in the yard. It was like, yeah, you know what? I'll buy it for like full price. <laughs> Ten times what you paid for it. I'm so sorry. Just stop making <laughs> that murder mobile. <laughs> Seeing his fucking face from a flyer just like posted on the wall. He's just in a fucking lawn chair out front of the garage doing like. <laughs> a sex <laughs> doll with his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking real doll with like Cody's outfit on it. <laughs> Fuck books. <laughs> <laughs> there were three people that came by his shop while he was in there because they're showing it to people that might want to come in there to put a business in there while he's got this thing in there. Oh my God. His thing was he wouldn't work on it during the day while the concrete business was in operation because it would just make so much fucking noise. Uh-huh. So he would sleep all day and he would work all night. My kind of guy. Wow. But there were three times where people came by and he had a lie about what he was doing. And the ones they would that, see it. They wouldn't see the actual. Uh, they wouldn't see it like un uncovered. It would be covered. And one time, one of the, the fucking realtor or something asked me, he's like, "Hey, what is this?" He's like, "Oh, one of the local professors asked me to devise like a cooling system for some bullshit." 
Yeah, and it's a secret. It's proprietary. I can't yeah. leak this information. Yeah. It's it's a uh, it's giving George Clooney and uh, uh, yeah, it's just gonna be <laughs> sex. Yeah, it's definitely not the fucking <laughs> the sex machine from fucking right after reading. Yeah. yeah, man. But dude, so once this fucking thing is lowered, he's like, all right, it's go time. So the first thing he does, so Cody Duchef's uh, business is the business right next door. Yeah, that's, that's the stop first. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the first one he takes out. And dude, the devastation is it that, open. Yeah, it's the daytime. Yeah. So this is like the middle of the afternoon. The whole thing lasts. So there's a dude that's like, no, 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 yes. no, no, stop, stop. Dude. Austin Power style. Wow. <laughs> dude, this starts at around two in the afternoon and it lasts until four o'clock. So everybody's wow, still there dude. at work. Two hours of terror. Dude, it was so much fucking fun to watch, Deke. That would have been a better name for the That is great. Better than Tread. But I guess it's like Tread. It's like, all right, the bulldozer Tread and also they're treading on him. Oh, uh, yeah. double on calls. But I do like Jake's better, man. Yeah. yeah. Redo the title. <laughs> <laughs> or even No Doze. Ooh. Yeah, you know, the people's version. I had a friend that used to snort that stuff. Uh, I used to uh, ingest it regular. Yeah? Yeah, I used, when I used to um, I used to stay on, up all night partying, and then I had an Atlantic City phase. So I would take it, then drive down Atlantic City, lose all my money, and come back. Anything like cocaine? Mm, nah, not probably, as fun. Probably close to like adderall ass, right? It was, it was fine. Yeah. I, I was young, too, so I could just stay up anyway. So I think I was... I didn't essentially need it, but it was just I, fun. I cannot handle too much caffeine these days. Yeah, I don't really? even think it affects me. Not even if you have, like, fucking a if bunch I, of cold brew or something? Buddy, if I had a cup right now, I would go to sleep in two hours. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you you did drink a Baja Blast. That's all caffeine. Mm-hmm. That's, that's high like, in that's caffeine. double fucking dose right there. But I know, like, in my, like, coffee heyday, I was having, like, nine shots of espresso in a day. And you would still so, yeah. sleep by midnight? I would take naps. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. I was very tired. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not doing that anymore. What are you doing in, your, in the place? Uh, just peanut butter on the gums. <laughs> <laughs> Helps me with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get Mr. Ed rebooted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe, I, maybe I'll do that with my wife. Uh, would you mind if I borrowed that, Jake? Sure. Yeah, peanut butter? Right. Like, I'll put peanut butter on my gums. I'll have her put jelly on hers. <laughs> and y'all gonna make a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Y'all gonna God make a love it. sandwich. I'm so hungry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gonna make it unbustable. <laughs> yeah he on that sting tantric tip <laughs> and i didn't find out what kind of snacks he had but marv did have uh some snacks and some drinks inside the fucking kill dozer dude cigarettes he had to always sick in the head dude <clears throat> there's nobody been more prepared he for their netflix. shenanigans <laughs> yeah. he, he had this was at the time he had netflix dvds and yeah, uh he a had little portable he DVD. had the envelopes in there with him that said Re- yeah. please return by jake he had one of those tv vcr combos in there. no way yeah he used it for the security but i guarantee you like if you're savvy enough to put it put a tape in it yeah just watch what do you think i'm getting bored yeah. <laughs> seinfeld it was the biggest <laughs> DVD at the time. Yeah. Maybe but, family guy. Yeah. But uh, Mountain Park Concrete, owned by Cody Duchef, is the first business he hits. And the devastation that this fucking dozer causes is, it, it's nuts that this machine can just, it, it, it doesn't, the machine doesn't even look like it's struggling at all. And it just yeah. plows through these fucking businesses. Did he level that entire building? It I, I not with the dozer. I imagine after everything was said and done, they had to level it. It was a concrete warehouse. So it's probably yeah. pretty sizable. Yeah. That would have taken a long time yeah. to get the entire structure down, probably. Most of these structures that he ruined, I think there were 13 buildings that he just fucking ruined. Yeah. Um, he just focused on taking out one wall. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ruining, like, the foundation and yeah. the, the balance of all that shit. So that was the first one he did, and then they were trying to stop him. They were bringing all these little... They were, like, a... They tried to, like, fucking... Like, fucking uh, joust with, like, a front-end loader with him. And he was just, like, pushing this thing back and back. It looked like a fucking Oklahoma drill. Did it really? Yeah. yeah. Say the combine. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this the actual? Yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, my God. But look how big this fucking thing like is, man. I he avoided that one tree. Well, he got that one. Yeah. Uh, well, that was, you know, there's <laughs> going to be in his way. Dude, he's, I mean, 
So, Jake, this is going on for two hours, and he's just, they have no idea what to do. What can you do? Yeah. Eventually, they're shooting at it, but it's not doing anything. Yeah. They're calling for the National Guard and the Air National Guard to come in, and they just don't know what to do. They're, they're like, trying to that. park shit in front of it. None of it is going to stop this fucking Dude, machine. I, I feel like even grenades wouldn't fuck it up, you Dude, know? Dude, they tried dropping flashbangs into the exhaust system, but nothing was fucking working. Uh, 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 to that point, they were trying to mount this thing, but again, he thought ahead. He greased the entire outside of this fucking thing to Jesus. make it nearly impossible for people to mount it. Jake's getting hungry. How does somebody... <laughs> <laughs> he greased this pig up, Jake. How does somebody get, like, who's that smart get so taken advantage of yeah. by a town? You know what I mean? I, I think, feel like the rage really fueled his ingenuity on this. Yeah. I think the reason that happens, Jake, is because his intentions were pure. He thought, oh, I'm doing good, therefore I think people will be receptive of this. Yeah. But for no other reason that they just had power that they wanted to abuse, that they fucking abused it and fuck this guy over. I, I like this guy. He is. Now, the one thing where it starts to get weird is, like, he takes out the library. and um, At this point, I'm assuming most businesses get cleared out as this rampage goes on, so no one's inside risking. Yeah. Fatality by a building well, falling on them. For the most part, he takes out a library, and I get a little emotional when I talk about this because he ruins his library, and I just can't stop thinking about it. all the homeless guys that were in there jacking off. I mean, where are they going <laughs> to jack off, Jeff? <laughs> no, but there were kids in an after-school program in a basement uh. of this library. They were fortunately able to get everybody out. Okay, good. After he had already started to uh when they, when they knew the rampage was going on, yeah. they're just going like frantically trying to like empty out these fucking yeah. buildings. Um, so that's the one thing where it's just like, ah, come on, man. Like this could have really been like Yeah. And I, I don't think that he had an intention. Right, that. yeah. I don't think yeah, so this either. Is more an infrastructure taxpayer. Yeah. Right. It is strange though that somebody who thought of had on, on so many things, so many aspects of this, didn't think Maybe there will be children in the library. Right. Um, and to that point, too, there were two businesses that he hit, which I don't think he knew that there were basements. One was the library and one was the hardware store. And one of them ends up fucking him pretty hard. But the children's program, I, that was in the basement of the library. So he might have, have just not known that existed mm -hmm. because everybody knows that the only people that go to libraries now are homeless guys wanting to jack off at the computers for 20 years ago, though. You yeah. Know? Imagine have, you would have your all your late fees absolved. Oh, my God. You'd be like, Look, it was in the return bin. Did you not get it? Like, that might be why they got rid of them, Jake. Um, <laughs> another funny note, too. He took out a playground. Taxpayer money. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But there were no kids on the playground, so nobody got hurt. I mean, he could see. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of this, like, he was shooting. I think, like, he ended up firing, like, over 80 shots from, like, there were, like, five guns mounted <coughs> from inside. What was he shooting at? Police? Police, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Police, I didn't know he was actually shooting. So he, he was shooting, and then also, uh, he was shooting, um, he tried shooting at Cody Duchef, like, after the initial crash into his building. When he Co was specifically shooting. He knew because Cody. I think Cody was the one in the front end lo loader. Okay. And he said, as Damn. as it's like starting to like overtake him, he started like ducking down, huh. and he felt like shit whizzing by his head. Holy he's like, shit. oh my god, he's trying to kill me. Whoa! It's like yeah. two fucking Papa deers just fucking locking horns, mm -hmm. trying to mount that doe. He's talking about buck god. buck. <laughs> so he's taking out all these fucking buildings. Uh, he ends up going to, uh, what was the fucking guy's, uh, Dick Thompson, the mayor. Dick Thompson's dead, but uh, Marv goes to his widow's house and crushes that. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be a little bit out of the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> like seven miles. It wasn't, a, it was, I doubt she lived next to the library. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. It was so it's so funny because like you could hear like the police transmission. They're just like, oh my god. Well, they found the note. Like they went they they found like his hit list during the rampage. Yeah, they're like, all right, he's probably going to the newspaper now. Mm -hmm. And he was going to the newspaper because he felt the editor was like slanted against him. And uh, I've seen interviews with this guy and the editor, uh, Patrick Brower, actually wrote a book about the incident called Rampage. It's pretty good. And uh, I don't get the impression that this guy was. 
uh, an antagonist. I think he was just perceived as an antagonist, maybe. And also, I don't know, who knows, maybe the more prominent people in town might have influenced his writing a bit, but yeah, I just didn't get the impression that he had any ill will toward uh, Marv. But Marv didn't see it that way, so Marv took out the fucking the newspaper building. Yeah, and we're living Marv's law, all right? <laughs> what Marv says goes. <laughs> And there's a funny picture that uh, that Patrick Brower ends up taking. Like uh, he knows they're coming, so he and the other employees in the newspaper they run out of the building. But Patrick's like creeping around the corner, and uh, you see the dozer approaching, and he's able to snap a picture before the dozer like notices him, and he's able to run out of the way. Whoa! Yeah, it's a pretty sick picture. Makes it sound like it's a cyborg before it notices him. It's gotta be that might run through your head when you're seeing this, even though. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like there's no explanation for what this might person. be. Right, yeah, and it's massive and it's so fucking fast. And then also he takes out a bank. Some Robin Hood. Yeah, I get it, man. Cool guy, man. So the last place that he hits is um, is the uh, the hardware store, and he's just fucking tearing through this fucking thing. But where he gets jammed up is the. The track, uh, one of the the fucking uh, treads on the fucking bulldozer, it goes through the floor. And almost all the buildings in town did not have basements. This was one of them. So it goes through, the floor gives way, and he ends up getting stuck in there. He's trying to reverse. It's not working. And now they're able to bring in some heavy equipment to kind of, like, block him in Uh there. And he couldn't have got out anyway because the thing was just fucking stuck at that point. Yeah. Yeah. He knows he's fucked, and he ends up shooting himself through the mouth, killing himself. And the there was no way for him to get out. He no, was he, he wasn't yeah. going to get out. And it takes them. He was, right. he was, that was his plan. Yeah. Yeah. He so, knew it was going to end that way, and that, that's what it was. He, I mean, he hit his whole fucking checklist, it sounds like. Dude, there was, I think there were 13 buildings. He ended up causing like $7 million in damages. That seems pretty low. That is, yeah. For destroying half of a town. Dude. It is a small town, but yeah, $7 million. 13 bill. I mean. That is 20 years ago. Yeah. But still, that's. Imagine you're just like you surround the vehicle, and you just all of a sudden you just hear episodes of Seinfeld start playing <laughs> from inside the, the tank. Bum, bum, bum. Is that Kramer yelling that? <laughs> uh, I immediately went to Home Improvement. I got still got fucking Richard Carn on the head. Oh, but um, mm-hmm. so everything ends at around four p.m. They hear the gunshot. They assume that he killed himself. It isn't until uh, 2 a.m. that they're able, they're using the thing off. They're using torches to dismantle it. They're able to get in there. They see that he's fucking dead. Wow. What they end up doing with the dozer is uh, they have it taken out of town and split up because they figure like people are going to try to like save it and use it as like a fucking. Sell it like fucking baseball seats. Yeah. Seats. Well, dude, one of the guys. (laughs) Have this in your basement. Oh, dude, that'd be so cool, man. (laughs) Yeah. One of the guys... Um, and you I'm, know this cheese board used to be part of Killdozer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see the melted steel edges on there. I mentioned the Thompson family, the prominent family, and uh, he went after their mom's house. They interview a couple of the Thompson sons in the documentary, and one of them was like, he's like, yeah, I kind of wish they kept it and we could put it in a museum here and use it as a, a tourism selling point. Yeah. To like, th- how many money. people would go? Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh my God, yeah. they would... Ne- See, we would be there. Sight they're missing yeah. out when they uh, yeah. drove what's his name to the brink, you know? Because mm-hmm. that's the kind of thinking he would have had. Left a carbon copy there. And this was kind of nice, Jake. <clears throat> Marv enjoyed uh, snowmobiling, and a bunch of his buddies, after he was cremated, they took his ashes and they tore it up on the snowmobiles and spread his ashes as they snowmobiled. That's so nice. It is. That's it really beautiful. is. Yeah. Never got married, never had kids. He did have a girlfriend for a while. Uh, she broke up with him. Yeah. I think it'll, all that is for the best. Yeah, for man. a fellow like that. That's yeah. crazy. Like, he did all that stuff, and they let you, like, take his ashes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, like, state property. Yeah. I uh, I do have to excuse myself. Uh, turns out the 12-ounce Red Bull really makes me piss. <laughs> you I'll be But RIP, happy birthday in heaven. Yes. Uh, more of he man. We're... Big fans, brother. Marv Heemeyer? More like Marv Hero Meyer in my eyes. I do like that, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. His favorite part was when he ran over the library. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Jake, it's not often we get somebody who uh, who leaves you with the warm and fuzzies like that. That was man. very pleasant, Mike. Thank yeah. you. That was, I, I'm I so did that happy. for you, man. That was very nice. The I so I've heard the term killdozer before, but I didn't know it was like a. I thought it was a, a movie. I yeah, me too. Like yeah. it, I until somebody mentioned it during like one of the live chats, and I like just typed it in. The first thing that popped up was the actual fucking bulldozer. Yeah. I was like, all right, I wonder what the fuck that is. And it's like, all right, there was a guy that was wrong that did this. Like, all right, I'll get to that eventually. And it's, that's 2004, right? So is that, is that peak BattleBots time? Ooh, that's a good question, man. Oh, man, he could have been the BattleBots commissioner. Dude, he could have been He could have been a champion. He may have had something, you know, yeah. in the works. Man. Like that Cody, man. Why was that little, that little Why was he, if he? You know, he's, he's okay now, right? He's still alive. I don't know, man. Okay. Well, he wasn't in the documentary, so I wonder if he's dead. <clears throat> he codeed. <laughs> <laughs> they Marv kinged him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just couldn't bring him back, baby. I mean, you would think. I don't know. You would think that, like, you have somebody next to you. You know, everyone's fucking with them. Wouldn't you show some compassion to a guy? I don't know. Or are you just like fuck now, that guy because he bought the land? Well, I mean, he he did pay him four hundred thousand dollars for it, so yeah. I mean, but that's after he saw his giant killing device and saw the look in his eye and his shaved head, or no, not shaved head yet, but yeah, he he knew he was done for at that point. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's because also how quickly he jumped into the front loader. You said to like. Mm-hmm battle him in mm. this thing and he was shooting at him too yeah so like he knew this was coming he knew something was coming mm-hmm. probably not to this extent he probably just thought it was going to be him mm. or his property but yeah that little fucker man you push people and you push people jake t- tell me about it let me ask you a personal question have you ever felt pushed to the point where you felt like all right if i could get away with this i would really hurt this person who specifically wronged you Oh, man. An old boss immediately pops into my head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What uh, kind of fucked up shit would this boss do? I think it was just a a terrible person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to really get into it. I don't want to give any clues here. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I don't know what the statute is or how how much longer I'm going to carry this hate in my heart. Well, there's no limitations as far as I'm concerned, Jake. You you have carte blanche to speak on this motherfucker. Jeff, do you have somebody in mind? I'm not like the premeditated like get go back for like revenge. I'm like yeah. more of like the freak out like in the moment type. Yeah. Of the there, I think I said it on here before about that time that uh, the entire line in Disney World turned on me and Bart. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a rage moment that I go back to where I'm like, fuck those people. Uh-huh. They're like probably the most hated people yeah. in my mind of the people that that those wronged fuckers, me in Disney yeah. World. I, I dislike them from the moment you spoke of them. Do you have anybody that has wronged you where you fantasized about getting this kind of get back? Oh, yeah. Hit me with them. I can't. Why? See, I don't, yeah, you can't disclose. Because in situation. my heart, they're on the list, brother. Uh, yeah. All right. There are people who have wronged me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who else could it be? Past employers. That's a big one, man. Yeah. Yeah, I often, there's, I, I mention her, I might have even given her last name in my book too, <laughs> but I definitely mention her first name, and this lady, like, I, the job was hard enough, and every day she would just, just compound any problem that was already happening that day, and just wreaking havoc, Yeah, and I would just, like, one of the ways that I would get through each day was just fantasizing about choke slamming this lady <laughs> to death. Yeah. To hell. Uh, to purgatory to only haunt her with the optimism of making it to heaven but never getting there. Ooh, cool. So my, my yeah, hatred is a deeper is, level of... Uh, my hatred transcends reality. That's going back to what we were, <laughs> <laughs> what we were talking about earlier about uh, leading people on. Mm. Like the, uh, you know. The Diddy promises yeah. of payment. Yep, mm-hmm. promises of payment. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Is that what, uh, they're on your list? Somebody who was <clears throat> promised that a former payment? boss. Gotcha. Yeah. I had another one. I, I event, look, Overall, I like this lady, but in this moment, I mean, it was just such, 
such an insane thing to say to somebody, but she was wealthy, so I think in her mind it made sense. Mm. Yeah. But um, my last, no, my second to last full time job, I made less than thirty thousand dollars a year. So every paycheck was like praying to God that nothing got fucked up and that my direct deposit hit on time mm. every two weeks. Yeah, and uh, all the out there were like. A significant amount of hours missing from my paycheck, so it was like five hundred dollars less than what I was expecting. And when I I emailed my boss as soon as I got into work, saying, "Hey, can you get this straightened out asap? This is what I worked." And she called me that day. She's like, "Listen, there's nothing I could do today." Um, yeah, that was my mistake. She's like, "I'm sorry." She's like, "But just think about how much money you'll have on your next paycheck." I was like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I guess I'll oh. eat think for dinner. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Like, oh my God. You fuck. That's crazy. But that's, I mean, yeah. that's but like, like, dude, that's no. an emergency payout. Yeah. Give me the fucking the front up loan. Like, take it out of your fucking pot. I don't care. Yeah. How. Dude. I mean, petty cash. Bro, like, relative yep. to that, like, I think I mentioned it to you before, but I had a boss that that just gave me, lent me $1,000 because I was waiting for a student loan or a, um, a student aid reimbursement. It's very nice. Dude, it was because it was like you would get pay, whatever it was. And it was like I submitted all my paperwork on time and it was just months went by. And then I emailed the lady because I knew it took like six weeks. And after like two months, I'm like, hey, can you tell me what's up with this? She's like, uh, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but I forgot to put it in when you gave it to me two months ago. So the six weeks starts now. Yeah, not as That's, nice as I thought then. Yeah, but no, this wasn't my boss. It was just the the girl who did this yeah. shit. Payroll lady? Yes. Paid you a thousand or the boss did? No, I went to my boss because he he was aware of the situation and he's like, did that get resolved? I was like, no, she told me six weeks from now. So he took out his checkbook and he's like, here's a thousand bucks. Even though like, I think the reimbursement was supposed to be like three grand. He's like, I'm going to give you a thousand bucks now. Pay me back whenever. And it was like one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. Yeah, I hope that lady got reprimanded. Should have came out of her fucking check. I don't think she she's even there anymore, man, but. But on top of that, too, there were a couple other people that weren't job related that uh, that I think about pretty often. One guy, I I still fantasize about beating him up in front of his wife and kids. <laughs> Dude, I never like understood like going back to Apocalyptico. We were talking, they're like, chopping people's heads off. They're rolling down the thing and they hold it up. I'm like, it's barbaric. And then like you encounter someone who wrongs you that it's much, like, and that's you're the like, nicest thing I could think of doing to them. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple non employment things that aren't coming to mind immediately, but there's certainly some, uh, just, you know, people from life mm -hmm. that are also on the list. Tell me about can, them. Yeah. Can I, I can't think can of I it. ask a, a follow up to that? Mm -hmm. Anybody in comedy? Um, no, nobody has irked me that much. Yeah. No, you don't care about them that much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they could possibly do to me. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, like, that, yeah. Outside of like people getting things that don't deserve it, you know what I mean? That's a, that's got nothing to do with like <laughs> with me. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like that's jealousy more than anger. Yeah. You know. But I did. I. I guess I'm doing pretty good. Um, Mentally speaking, if if I've lost track of my list, I feel like I had a solid five on there, yeah, and I can only really think of three right now. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Yeah, uh, the guy who I mentioned, like fantasizing about beating him up in front of his wife and kids. He was an old comedy friend, <laughs> and uh, this is specifically just his wife and kids, nobody else. Yeah, I, it's the most disrespectful thing you can do to somebody. Yeah, yeah. and I, I I I still want to do it, but. Uh, yeah, a fear that I wish I didn't have to live with. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not afraid of your ass, dude. I'm afraid of much stronger, bigger guys <laughs> who parked a little bit crooked outside of Wawa and I couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but this fucking guy, there, there was a time where, like, he was just, like, a constant fucking cunt, like, online. And it's like, eventually, like, I just unfriended him. But then... When Tim and I started Dad Meet and uh, people started listening, um, it was just a very fun time because there's like, there's so few things that are successful. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, even like at the time, I think we might have had like a thousand people listening per episode, but it was just like, 
I'm like, this is this is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe. And like we would tweet about how grateful we were for things. And this guy was an anonymous account, but I knew it was him just by the way he tweeted, just by his verbiage. And it was like, I know it's this fucking cunt. And his brother is a convicted sex offender. And he was talking shit about Tim and I one day. I was like, well, we might be bad, but we're not fucking 13 year olds in a parked car bad. And then I, I think I might have linked the news story oh where, of, of his God. brother's arrest or something like that. You want to play ball? We playing hard ball. And uh, oddly enough, the guy who was pretending not to be the guy started texting me. <gasps> like He revealed himself. Well, he's like, uh, somebody told me you posted this online about my brother being a convicted sex offender. It's uh, like, I don't know if I'm the guy me. you should be mad about. Like, your brother's fucking kids in cars, dude. So, yeah. uh, th- it's not a Jerry Seinfeld fucking Netflix <laughs> show. All right. <laughs> and then he was like, he was like <laughs> calling me at work saying, pick up your phone right now. It's like, I'm, I work with people with special needs. Like, I, uh, r- now is not the time for me to engage with a fucking lame cunt. <laughs> and then I was like, look, eventually like I got packed. I was like, look, dude, I will meet you when I'm done my shift. Tell me, tell me where to meet you. I'll come find you. That was the end of it. And that was that. But every now and again, like somebody will send me a screenshot of him just randomly saying, just want to remind everybody what losers, Tim Butterly and Mike Rainey are still. I, the last that I saw was maybe two years ago where it was just paragraphs on paragraphs. It's like, bro, <sighs> Go spend time with your kids, man. I mean, Mike, yeah. that honestly kind of seems like you are way on top with that kind of situation. You know what I mean? Like, the oh, yeah, no somebody doubt. Yeah. is taking yeah. the time to be a hater. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. You yeah. got to be a little bit of a somebody to have a hater like that. Yeah, and it's just, it was just, I think part of why, why I got so fucking engaged in it is just because we were friends at one point. And yeah. I thought we were good friends. Yeah. And it was just... It was just like that, like the switch flipped, and all of a sudden it was like we were not friends, and then it was like not, not only are we not friends, but I also hate you. Yeah, Damn, I like the I like the advice John just gave you, though. You know, like if if you got a hater, it means you're doing something right you for know? sure. Yeah, definitely. Just, yeah, just think about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think about that. I hate you so much, John. <laughs> Look into my eyes through the cam- <laughs> through the screen. <laughs> Jake, I love you. John, I can't fucking stand oh, you so man. much. Can man. we see hater number one? <laughs> <laughs> hater number two. <laughs> John, I, ho- I hope your next Mexi melt isn't even melted, you piece of shit. <laughs> Wait, uh, oh, what are man. you doing? Are you my hater? I am. Yeah. No, we're talking about Jeff being my hater. No, I don't want to be. I don't want to hate him. No, Je- Jeff, Jake was pointing Jeff, out that Jeff, Jeff is, is my number one hater. Well, I've become your hater because from you hating Jeff. I'm now on oh, Jeff's man. side. So now, now you got just, two. Jake, sorry, whose side are you on? I'm so upset over here. Now I'm thinking about getting a grilled cheese burrito and then forgetting the grilled <laughs> cheese. And I'm very upset. I'm on the side that makes the order right. That's what I can tell you tonight. And I'm officially lost, which means <laughs> we've reached the deep depths of the kumquat hour. We made it. Trash baby. night. Oh, I want to see trash night, and it's fucking pouring out. Yeah. I gotta, pour, I gotta bring wet cans through the house tonight. Mm. Guess I have to wait a week to put that trash out. Yeah, I know you're getting hungry, Jake, but don't fucking uh, get a, a boner over these wet cans I just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, Jake, pull out your phone. Let's see if that's in your search. It's not in my search. I've been good. It's I've a subreddit. Good trash night, wet cans. I've been a good boy on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what uh, does trash night mean? Trash day. They came early, but they're all women. Uh, there, <laughs> there is a uh, a subreddit called Trashy Boners. Oh man, is it a picture of the wiener itself? No, it's like like trashy ladies that give you give a you boner. boner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any dick pics in the comments? Or I'm sure, man. You got anybody in your life that sends pictures of hog in the group chat? No. You want one? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird question. <laughs> you don't have a group chat with somebody that sends a dick? No. Oh, oh my buddy Brett is the best. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like he's always sending a picture of him taking a piss. That's a dick <laughs> sending name. Just see the top of the shaft. He sends he send you about 50% of limp, it looks like. <laughs> Jake, you ever send a dick pic? He's always bagging us. Having a, a good dick day. <laughs> Y'all want to see it? You tell me what you think of it. I'm, I'm all right. I'm look good. at my friend's dick. You yeah, I'll look at that hog, man. You will? Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Oh, man, we're deep into this. I'm going to have to go straight to the pictures. Why are you going to your saved gallery? <laughs> Jake, what would it get? What would it take for you to send hog? I'd never do it, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
keep the thing locked in the basement. Locked in, in the code. Disney vault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In there with 101 Dalmatians and Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Do you think they don't put the hog picks in with the rest of them? I can't uh, be scrolling for this. Look under the ones you bookmarked. <laughs> <laughs> give me hog. Give me give me that which I desire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gruel. <laughs> Jake, did you know Metallica's going on tour again this summer? Are they? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Are they doing, um, like, around here? The closest they'll be is Boston. Okay. Is this, like, a second leg of that tour they did last year? Yeah, they're. I think they might be going to Europe soon, if they're not there already. Then they're doing Chicago and Boston, and I think might have, Detroit. Did you see James Hetfield said that smoking cigars before the shows has actually helped his voice and that he's singing better than he ever has? I've actually seen him, like, when they take breaks, like, sitting on the side yeah. of the stage, like, smoking a cigar. He so. credits smoking cigars to him having a better voice. Brother, he sounds wow. great, man. Yeah. Uh, you Metallica guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. my dad was a big Metallica guy and passed That's that sweet. on to me. Yeah, I got, like, in my car right now, I think I've got, like, all their albums. Oh, sick, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're terrific, man. I um, I went with Shaner last year. And then they did a thing at the movies where they, they broadcast uh, their shows at Arlington Stadium. Those were, like, live, Arlington, right? Texas, yeah. They were, like, real yeah, time? Yeah, they were fun. Yeah. It was an odd experience, though, like, watching a, a rock concert at the movies because everybody's just watching it like a movie instead of jamming. Just everyone dressed up in, like, Metallica shirts? A couple people. Yeah. Anyone eating popcorn? <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> it's just such a weird experience. Yeah, I know, brother. It was very odd. It it, it felt like anyone jerking off in the. Th <laughs> I don't know, man, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it definitely was an odd movie going experience. It just felt like you were doing something bad. <laughs> man, I had to scroll, but I finally found a picture of my friend's dick. It's a hug. He's only showing a little bit, you know? Yeah. Wonder what Could be left. all of it. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> That's a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> Show the camera. <laughs> Man, it seems like just yesterday he was sending me pictures of his dick. Oh, no. Is he March still with 23rd. us? 23rd. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. All right. It's not Monday, so he's not bowling. Why isn't he sending me pictures of his fucking dick? <laughs> you don't ever send him one back? Now he begs for it. You can't give a beggar what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> what if you sent him balls? Would you ever consider that? Wow, that would make him fucking piss, dude. Uh -huh. Giving him a teaser like that. Oh man. Would you consider this? What if I sent you my hog and you passed it off as yours? Oh my he knows what my dick looks like looks like. He's mm -hmm. not gonna be fooled. A mother we always recognizes your child's Is this the dude who's dick who held your dick in the hospital? <gasps> no, heavens no. I was gonna say that would be a nice full circle moment. Yeah, it would. No. Every month he sends you a picture of his dick. <laughs> for holding your dick one time in the hospital. No, we fell out of touch. I wonder why. Mm. I wonder if it was because of that one intimate touch. <laughs> he got hard. <laughs> that would have made the nurse's job so much easier. Oh, man. We got it from here. He's just... <laughs> He's the real hero. Were you banging pots and pans for him? <laughs> no, but I will on this New Year's Eve. Yeah. Would you consider putting a little uh, blowy New Year's Eve thing hanging out of it for your friend <laughs> this New Year's Eve as well? For him to blow on it? No, for your penis to blow into it to send to him as a photo transmission. Yeah, do it out the butt. I should, I, I should send him updates on my dick. Like growth chart updates? Well, like this is what it looks limp like now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is what it's doing. It's Because I was skinny back then. <laughs> Felt cute. Might delete later. <laughs> I really am curious, uh, you know, blackout drunk, but in shape, how small my penis was then. I, mean, I think I could blow his mind with how small it is today. Oh, man. It's like that movie <laughs> Shrinking. <laughs> you mean Shrinky Dinks? Shrinky Dinks. <laughs> Wait, do you mean downsizing? Downsizing, A.K.A. Yeah. Alexander Payne's Shrinky Dinks? <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> Man, you really had my back on Twitter when that movie came out. <laughs> what tweeting, happened? I was tweeting about shrinking things all the time, <laughs> and so he funny. was he was fucking biting all he could. Was, <laughs> a lot of big. engagement from Mr. Matera on that. Sorry one. about that. <laughs> no, I loved it. You yeah. gave me fuel to continue, man. Man, I can't stop thinking about Marv Hemeyer. Yeah, that guy, uh, he didn't really do anything bad. No, he got his revenge. He he got justice, man. Yeah. Kind of. No, I mean, kind of fully. He got the 400 grand, passed it on to his family. Imagine being so pissed off with someone that you just... Get good come, at a skill. Get you're good at a skill <laughs> and then come to peace with just, like, ending your life over it. Yeah, oh that is God, crazy. Take How that old out. was he when he died? All right, so 51. He was 52. Still a young man. Young man, yeah. but I, I feel like it's enough to be like, all right, I'm, I've seen when I, you know. I mean, dude, that's like, he he's a fucking martyr. Yeah. yeah. The guy's the second coming of Bro. Christ, man. Yeah. Let that be a tale to all you small towns. Let that be a veggie tale, the one where they talk about <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I that's I think that's the point where I realized I didn't want to have any more kids is watching Veggie Tales one day and a, a piece of celery <laughs> is telling me I'm living in sin. It's like, <laughs> fuck off, man. Wait, they weren't always religious, were they? No, but there were always religious undertones. They had to like the a, a Moses one. Oh, really? It well, wasn't they are, when they're, it's a Christian cartoon. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought there was just the one episode where they dressed up like Egyptians and they're doing uh, Passover stuff. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You didn't pass over that episode? <laughs> you watched it? Why didn't you pass over that joke? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Did you uh, see that? That was the devil coming for me. Yeah, saying, knock that shit off, John. Yeah, you think it's too mean? You think I the like devil's that. saying, even that's too mean? Dude, we got snapping candles. Or the devil was just like, zap. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, that's either. Uh, Wait, yeah. zap on you or yeah. zap in you? Zap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we zapping in your head. Oh, ass. man. Yeah, you're talking about Jet Catcher Matera? <laughs> yeah, we all be zapping in him on the road. <laughs> jet Catcher? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jet. Ken Jennings said Jet the other night on Jeopardy. Why? Because the new tournament is called Invitational Tournament. Jeopardy Invitational Tournament. Whoa. And he said, join us for Jet. I was like, bro, you know that means come, right? <laughs> he knows. He's a little nasty ass. You think yeah, he is? He's, he's funny. Ass. I love him. I think yeah. he's the most appropriate uh, he is terrific. follower to Trebek. I think they should have beaten Mayim Bialik to death with a rock <laughs> before oh, even considering great. her. Maybe Jake, just put it. one of her classic blossom hats over her eyes. <laughs> I was, her friend Six was somebody that I loved as a child. Do You had your crush on Six? I always had a, a little lady to crush on as a child because I just oh. wanted love so badly, and uh, she hmm. was one. My big one was... Uh, Al, the the middle girl from Step by Step. Ooh, yeah, pretty yeah. lady. She was like a little tomboy who became quite the piece. Kimmy Gibbler for me. It was always... You're, really? Oh. No, no, no. Hey, she was a pretty girl. She just acted like the goofball. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she, she was pretty. I would say uh, I liked Stephanie on Full House. Big joke, Stephanie? Yes. Well, Stephanie I mean, was my choice over DJ for sure. Yeah. Which is, I think I'm the exact same age as the Olsen twins, but even as someone their age, they were always like little kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though they played their own age, right? Yep. They were born yeah. into the show. Yeah. I guess, how old, Stephanie would have only been a couple years older than me. I guess I just related to the uh, how rude. No, wait, that was that? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, which who, one was which? I don't know, but Jeff, who do you want to TGIF? Uh, the pink, the pink ranger. Uh, okay, yeah, beautiful. And uh, Topanga. Oh God, Topanga. Topanga oh, turned. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Topanga, were you older Topanga? Early? No, early? no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. All right, not like weirdo Topanga. No, yeah. no, I was a weirdo. I think as the turn happened, I was there. You were, you I was, were ready. I was as the turn happened. Uh huh. All right. So if we had to do a Friday night TV, I like this. <laughs> Jake, I like this a lot. <laughs> Jake, if we had to do a Friday night TV, Mount Busmore. Who would be on it for you? I would go to Panga number one face. Oh, man. Yeah. Kelly Slater. 
Real beauty, man. Wait, no. Are we doing... Uh, Listen, we... I'll include all the shows, man. Okay. Well, is, that, is that not okay? Oh, it wasn't Saturday a Friday night morning, show. not Friday night. It was on every morning. All right, let's go weekend idiot. programming. It was on every morning before school. Weekend programming, Mount Busmore. Uh, we can, we'll, we'll count. Uh, yes, we will. Saving saving the bell. <laughs> all right. Kelly? Yeah, She's Kelly. your number one? I'd, I'd say she's up there. Number one or number two. All right. She certainly made... Very horny. Uh, she's Damn, you my- turn into Gru when you get horny. I never knew that about you. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Despicable you. Jesus, John. Oh, man. I'm seeing stars. It's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Gru, rise. What are we talking about? My penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly Kapowski's on there. Al's got to be on there. All right, Jeff. For me. For a second, I thought you said Alf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy, oh, happy early God, Fabiano dude. to everybody yeah. out there. Oh, That's man. Thanksgiving on Melmac. Dude, just imagine that fur brushing up against your hips. My goodness, man. Dude, you, you trying to eat a cat, brother? <laughs> Jake, you, you care if I go for this last Founders? Go I, it, I got more in the fridge. I'll yeah, get you more. Okay. Yeah, you're good, man. Do you want more? Trash night. Uh, I'm okay. It's trash night. I gotta fucking do the trash tonight. In the yeah, rain. I'll get you another one. That's gonna be bonkers, oh. dude. All right, are we are we finishing out our uh, our lists? I got two more then. All right, two more. Okay, so what were the classic shows? Shit, I mean, I'm trying to think. Was Tool Time was a uh, Home Improvement on TJF? Heidi had me. <laughs> Heidi yes. Magoo. I'm trying to Heidi Magoogie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Man, I honestly don't think uh, DJ or Stephanie would make it for me. Stephanie might. Stephanie got, but I don't think compared to Al, dude, it might be the other. I don't know who Al is. I, I you don't remember step by step? I remember step by step. I just can't remember what she looked like. She was the tomboy that was. Uh, oh, thanks, buddy. The Lambert kid. Okay, not the um. She was the dad's kid, Patrick Duffy's kid. So they were all like rough around the edges. And then Susan. Is that Susan... the girl from Scrubs? Uh-uh. Wasn't that the little girl on that show? No, I don't know what else that girl uh, did. Uh. Sarah Chalk from Scrubs, you mean? Yeah. The voice from Rick and Morty as well? Yes. She was no. a child star? I thought so. I don't think so. She's not Al. Oh, okay. I don't know what else she would have been in. <sighs> This is such great kumquat hour topic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, uh, she's a dark horse for me, but uh, the dead big titty girl from Family uh, Matters. I? Family Matters. Um, the nerdy chick? No. I, I don't know anybody that died from that show. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anyone who died from that show. What else was on... Well, all right, let's uh, never, make it easier for me. I never found the, um, what's the other girl from Saved by the Bell? Um, she was Becky. Oh, uh, this girl. Oh, she yeah, died? she was like the nerd. Marla, was that her name? I think so. She was a real oh, beauty. Man. What year did she die? She was very pretty. 1998, man. 30, 30 years young. Whoa. Uh, what was your, what were you just asking, Jake? I can't remember. That was a tough one, Jake, man. Oh, uh, buddy. Just it was a minute ago. I don't think there's a, a fire. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Even. Smoke alarm in here. <laughs> Someone just came to my mind was um, uh, one of the girls from Fresh Prince. Um, oh, Tatiana Ali, Ashley, Ashley, Karen Parsons. Yeah, Ashley was cute. In hindsight, Hillary is very hot. Yeah, yes. but for some reason, as a child, I was yep. not attracted to her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hillary totally would, as an adult, well, mm-hmm. not as an adult, but like. Yeah, yeah. Did when you, you're an adult, you right, look back right. and you're like, oh, she was as cute as Ashley. Did you know that Tatiana Ali dated Jonathan Brandis from Never Ending Story? No, were they together when he died? They might they they might have been. And I, I do remember feeling like, do you ever feel like you had a chance with some girls that there was no chance you had? I can still <laughs> bag Britney Spears, buddy. Yes, and I truly, like when, when Jonathan Brandis killed himself, I was like, my stock is going up with Tatiana Ali. Man, you really always find the silver lining in some ch- sad child <laughs> actor suicide, don't you? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to firm it up right here. 
I'm going to go with. I've been firm. Yeah. <laughs> firm in. He's firming up. Uh, Al. Uh-huh. Al Lambert. The girl. <laughs> um, Karen, the other sister from Step by Step. Wow. Yeah, they had beauty. some pretty girls in there. Just the oh. 10 of us had some pretty girls, too. Bro- um, Brooke Thies was one of them. And I can't remember the dark haired lady's name, but she Ooh. she was very pretty as Can well. Can we count unhappily oh, ever after in this? I don't remember that. Which girl? The Bobcat Goldthwait Bunny. Oh, oh like yeah. Nikki, Nikki Cox. Cox. Oh, true oh. beauty, man. Nikki Cox is on there, and I'm gonna close it out with Balky. Oh, dude, what about uh what's her name from uh Married <laughs> with Children? Yeah, um, pretty lady, man. Applegate? Christina Applegate. Or, uh, I, I mean, as I got older I really liked uh uh Peggy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gemma. Rewatching that, I'm like, Al, what are you doing, you idiot? What? Uh, just Al, just because he would always oh, say, Al, you know, Bundy. Al Bundy, yeah. Yeah. She's so many Al's to deal with. We got Bundy, Which one? Borland, Lambert. So that one was the hot one, right? <laughs> that's the hot one. No, or are you saying that Dana. one? Okay. Dana. Is that Al. Bubbles? Oh, okay. Al was smoking. She got a tie on uh, signifying that she's still a little bit of a tomboy. But trust me, there comes a time when fucking uh, who's the who's the old elder Lambert boy? Is that the kid from uh, Beethoven? Cody. Oh, Cody. Cody's no, Cody's the, Cody's the Cody's younger the cousin kid. in the yeah. driveway. Um, shit. Uh, TJ, TJ, BJ, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Kumquat Hours with TJ, DJ, BJ, DJ. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, JT. JT. Yes. Initials. I yeah. knew they were letters. Yeah. Who was the retarded guy on the show? What was his name? You mean the guy that did karate in the driveway? That's what I'm thinking of. So is it Cody? Cody. All right. So and, and Cody Cody comes in second season. Right? Yeah. And then got allegations. Uh turns out he was protecting his child from his uh okay, that's from his wait, drunken what? lady. What? Yes, yeah. Uh he was wrongly taken yes, out. Yes, and got- the retraction was obviously on the last page of the newspaper kind of wow. situation. Those fuckers, and man. Yeah, so he, he lost he, the kickboxer franchise after that. And was not a cast member on uh, Step by Step for the latter seasons. Uh, but they did bring him back for the finale. Good. Yes. And JT was the kid with the nice hair, correct? He was like the wannabe suave. Oh, man. Pretty boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't say he's a pretty right. boy. I got to make sure we're on the same page with this man. Yeah, why don't you look at pictures me. of the child that played JT from your phone? I got someone that I just remembered. <laughs> um, yeah. It was the girl who JT. Was boy Meets World, but was she was like a friend. Oh, my God. You know who I'm talking yes, about? Yes, the bad girl? Yeah, is it Maitland Ward? Is that who it is? Oh, oh dude, she's a porn star. What? Yes. yes. She's a what? porn star. Wow. Maitland I know Ward. porn star's names. She that, is no a porn way. star. Yeah. The, the no short haired redhead girl. That she, girl? That's her, man. Jake, I think you're being disingenuous by saying you don't know she's a porn star. No man. I swear to God, I had no, no idea. No man that holds his phone that close to his face is unaware Dude, of my what. My eyesight's going, man. What ladies are not porn, porn stars. Oh, my God. Jake, if you're fogging up your phone's glass, you're too close. He's got oh. tongue ID. I thought of another uh, crush. It's not the same realm, uh, but definitely uh, childhood of uh, Winnie Cooper. Oh, real beauty, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah, Danica McKellar. Man, what a great show that was. Oh, yeah. I like to go back and watch New these, man. Is awesome. I could, I could use some, uh, some whimsy and nostalgia. Did you guys know Daniel Stern directed Rookie of the Year? Maybe. I did not know that. Incredible. Oh, that's who I was thinking of. Yes. Um, Full yeah, House. Yeah. Yes. Bad Girl in Full House. She yeah. probably was also a bad girl in a couple of episodes of you remember her, uh, Mike? Boy Meets World. Oh, I'm sorry. This is- What's her name? Yeah, if- Marla Sokoloff. So- <laughs> All right. Stop you. it, Jake. You <laughs> fuck. I knew something disgusting was going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> That's dude. actually her name, dude. How did she make it through grade school by <laughs> sucking all off? Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Here's a here's a screenshot from back in the day. Yeah, it's a little bare midriff for your all ass. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pro- she, would, she would make the top five. 
peripheral the characters, no. then she is in mine. Yeah. Wow, man, we're like the same age. Wow, man. <laughs> Then you have a chance. <laughs> Send her a message. Wow, man. <laughs> Maybe we should write to her next. You know, Jake, you know, I, it's easy to make fun of me, but one day my wife is not going to be breathing. And unfortunately, one of the sad Let's aspects of life is that life does go on. And <laughs> death is so much harder for the ones that are left behind. I've always said that. So I just. You have um, always said that, Mike. Well, you know what? That brings you back to the kill dozer. You do like to think ahead. I do, man. And uh, I, I would honestly like. <laughs> I am a hundred percent certain that I'm nowhere near as intelligent as Marvin Hemeyer, and I would lock myself in that thing before it had gas in it. <laughs> <laughs> there would Holy be no gas or food. It would I just could, be me and the VCR. I can see my cell phone in one of my cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, dude. Guys! Guys! <laughs> can someone call AAA? Yeah. I'm just firing off the guns, hoping someone would open the fucking <laughs> canister, man. Oh, uh, Dude, if he really... The AAA thing would have been <laughs> such a fun funny yeah. ribbon on the whole day. <laughs> yeah, I broke down. Hey, what, what what's the make and model? Uh, it's a Killdozer uh, fucking 2004, man. Yeah, I don't know if we service those. Uh, it's a custom. <laughs> yeah. It's welded shut. <laughs> but you got Road Warrior side assistance. <laughs> Happy birthday in heaven, Marvin Hemeyer, brother. We love you so much. We're joking yeah. because we love you, brother. Yeah. Road warrior side <laughs> assistance. That is fucking good <laughs> fucking stuff. Man. God damn, kill those rules so much, man. I yeah, love them. I, I love them and guy. I miss them, man. It's we have to do something nice for him. What is something nice we could do to memorialize Killdozer? I think <clears throat> uh oh, do I have a weird thing in my voice? I think that when we go to a city that has scooters that we bungee cord ourselves together <laughs> and we scoot till the cops stop us into anything that's in our way. Mostly people. I would do that. Why don't we ask the town folk who they have the biggest problem with in town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no. And then we'll ask that guy. Okay. Who his beef is with. All right. And then we'll fuck those people up because that's probably an outsider that got dicked on a sewage uh, the sewer board. Ah. Yes. So we need to take the little guy's side. Yep. Because wow. he wasn't from there. Yeah. Speaking of Yeah, which, sir, we're not all from Frishtown. All right? <laughs> Get scared. You did? Oh, man. Oof. I'm sorry. It's okay. There's, My neighbors are all nice, but I know there's some people in that neighborhood that really don't want me to be the king there. But I am the king. I'm the king of Fishtown. <laughs> Big fish, small pond. I don't even live in Fishtown. <laughs> but I don't live in Kensington either, and that's what's important. Yes. Just the, really close. Guys, there's a movie that's playing at uh, one of my favorite theaters, the Bryn Mawr Film Institute. It's about uh, midgets, and it was made in 1970. Sounds where, problematic. Where do I start? Sounds fun. The ground up. <laughs> Why are they playing it? I don't. Well, they're um. So they feature specific directors for a given month. It's called Snow White. <laughs> and uh, this is a uh, Werner Herzog movie. And I'm gonna pull up the name of it. Do you guys ever see Grizzly Man? No. <clears throat> That's a documentary, right? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. It's like really sad, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the guy's name? Timothy Treadwell. He uh, he names all the bears, and uh, one of the bears takes his hat, and I think the bear's name is Fox. And he's like, Fox, get back here with my hat, or something like that. Yeah. It's like he's like very Mr. Garrison. Oh. Get over here with my hat, Fox. Hey, Fox. So the movie's called Even Dwarfs Started Small. Little on the nose. Funny joke. Funny yeah. joke title. I'm going to see. I forget what time it's playing. It might be a night that we're recording, but if it's not, I would like to go. Are they playing other Herzog films that month? I think or there's is it all think, midgets all the time, <laughs> baby. Yeah. 
I, I think they're playing one of his movies a month, and they do like 50th a anniversary a film education series. Before, if you want to go to that, and people can ask questions, they'll have a local film professor come and tell you different things about the movie. Gross. <laughs> in front of the theater? Yeah. yeah, you're not even inside. You're just you're just in the alleyway behind it. Oh, but this is kind of cool. I am going there to see Bull Dorm in the middle of this month. That is nice. That's awesome. A classic baseball movie. Dude, Kevin Costner. He's the star of every good baseball movie except I, for yeah. Moneyball. He and truly is. And Rookie of the Year. And I, Little Big League. Sandlot. But he's the star of four very good baseball movies. Yeah. So they're playing the midget movie Wednesday, May 1st. But, man, uh, yeah, Kevin Costner, man, the guy just does something to me. And not in the way that your grossest aunt does it, too. <laughs> um, we've got Bull Durham, his inaugural baseball movie. For the Love of the Game was great. For the Love of the Game is amazing. Yeah. Field of Dreams... Makes me miss my father. Yeah, that's what's a big what's the fourth? Movie. Doesn't he do a fourth uh, baseball movie? Is there a fourth baseball movie? Yeah, he did Put Me In Coach, which was about the player that was uh, banging his manager. <laughs> Wait, was the manager getting inserted into? <laughs> there was a third teammate that was putting him into coach. Yeah. <laughs> They caught him on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking tin cup, but the swing is still sweet. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? The guy's mm. got natural baseball abilities and has made sure he's directed himself in multiple horse movies. The guy's uh, an ace mm. on the back of a steed. He really is, man. You've been watching Yellowstone a lot, haven't you? Uh, I've seen them all. Much like Sons of Anarchy, it starts to suck. After a couple seasons. Yeah. Yeah. That Taylor Sheridan is a real piece of shit, huh? You know Taylor Sheridan was in Sons of Anarchy? And cool. basically made Sons of Anarchy on horses. Really? In Yellowstone. That little fucker. It is, it is ah. Sons of Anarchy on horses. like Basically. Yeah. He's it, a cop. In, in Sons, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, yeah. He gets killed. Deputy. At a funeral. <clears throat> Spoiler alert. That's straight out of Save the Cat. Like the, the, uh, same, the but script different. writing thing, yeah. yeah. Save the cat. It's so, a, sc- a screenwriting uh, like guidebook to help you like write a script, and it says like basically what Hollywood wants is Hollywood wants is the same but different. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and adapted to a, horses. He ran into some trouble initially because he was going to call it Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I love how much you committed to the nay. <laughs> A nay. <laughs> Something that doesn't even sound like it would be at the beginning of the word anarchy. <laughs> I'll much put, like I'll put that shit there. <laughs> Ben's rhymes to suit his needs. <laughs> Michael Rainey, the genius. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call a near thought. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious, man. Uh, we sold out our Boston show. Did we really? No yeah. way. Yeah, man. Somebody bought a ticket tonight. Amazing. Yeah, we had one ticket left for all day. Yeah. And somebody bought it, and our show is sold out. So that is our third sellout. Man. Man, we're cooking, baby. Fucking A. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. I'm so excited. Me too, man. It's going to be such a fun weekend. Yeah, I yeah we should do something to celebrate. We should uh, tether our scooters together. Mm-hmm. Does Boston have scooters? Has anyone been I there don't recently? Know. They have one horse you have to ride. <laughs> you have to warn them that the British are coming when you're on it. Yeah, you have to sing the Beastie Boys song. <laughs> Intergalactic, that one? Intergalactic. <laughs> <laughs> Intergalactic. Stop smoking today. Jake, loosen the helmet. <laughs> oh, it would be so funny to wear the dunce helmet on top of a horse. Yeah. I was just going to say, even though we typically only do the dunce helmet... When people in the chat say somebody's name three times, Jeff, John, and I, we could uh, say Jake's name right now and make him wear the helmet. Oh, man. Jake. 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 Yeah. Yeah, There we go. 
the first ever non live audience helmet <laughs> bequeathing. Yeah, we'll have the helmet and uh, we'll get on a horse and get our picture taken. Perfect. Uh, I got to imagine they got horses around there, right? Mm, they you do. ever seen a horse there? I don't know. I, I said they do, but I have no frame of reference. There's cobblestone streets. Just It just makes yeah. me assume that there's a horse nearby. We can do, we can do a horse and carriage ride if you want. Oh, I would feel terrible. I did, actually, before. I <clears throat> By myself. Yeah, the horse, horse. shot himself. <laughs> <laughs> did that horse grow a thumb? <laughs> <laughs> he got two hooves with a shotgun. <laughs> did you like it? Uh, yeah, it was fun. Mm. Yeah. Was it a romance thing? No, I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did you jerk off in the carriage? <laughs> Dude, a single man on a fucking horse and carriage ride might be the single, single saddest thing anybody could ever see. <laughs> Just holding a rose. <laughs> <laughs> in your teeth. Where is she? <laughs> waving, waving like it's a parade. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it was a romantic mm. thing. Damn. Time. You are a lover, Jake. Yeah, certainly ain't a fighter, that's for sure. <laughs> no, you are. You're yeah, getting, you're getting in fighting shape. Yeah, I fucking fucked that foam pit up. Now it's on to the next thing. Beds. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, y'all. Can't believe it, man. This really does cut the blow f- flood the really fast. <laughs> I was just about to say, your blow, blow flood flow. is not what it used to be, man. <laughs> blow flood. Do you smell French toast? <laughs> I wish. Man, that would be the best oh way to God. go. Somebody make your breakfast? <laughs> that would be a nice thing. You know how people put weird shit in the casket? That'd be nice to like put like a nice like pad of French toast in Dude. your pop-up's uh If I went to suit a viewing and there was a plate of bacon in the... I would be <laughs> crying up there I for saying, a long time. <laughs> it's everybody <laughs> takes a <laughs> piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you have to assume they're bringing more. There's only <laughs> five pieces on the plate. So I'll stay here for a while and finish it. Oh, man. Well, I'll see you guys at 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So if I get a haircut at 1030, would you mind if I picked you up after that? No, pick me up before so I can watch you get a fucking haircut. <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck? I didn't know if you had your heart set on... Leaving at that specific time. No, you're the one that wanted Yo, to leave. Wait, I know, but I also haircut. want a haircut, and I was able to get one at 1030. Does he got, does he got room? I'll come with you. Because otherwise, what the fuck you're am I You're going to be going together either way. Yeah, I'm not going to watch him get a minutes. fucking haircut. It's You'll be minutes. with me. What if we make this concession There's with the barber, Jake? There's a pizza place down there. This eat... is going to fuck my odds up of getting McDonald's breakfast, though. Oh, it's it's already gone. 1030 is the cutoff. Fuck. You could always wake up on your own. What a dumb We're gonna raid his place like SEAL Team Six. <laughs> you, y'all know I got a bat with a knife taped to it. Don't even think about it. I'm not asking about your dildo drawer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, get a haircut. I'll, I'll sleep a little bit later. All right, so we'll be at your place by eleven. Shows at seven. That'll give us eight hours to get to Boston. You should make it in like five and a half. We can check in our hotel. Get a little, <laughs> little, little nap in. No, there won't be time for a nap. What? We're we'll cutting. We it still got to drive twenty minutes to the hotel. It's time for a shower, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe lay down and see what's on the TV. Yeah. Watch half an episode of Impractical Jokers. Would you get in the pool? Not before the Try show. To put my no. legs behind my head in the hotel bed. Mm-hmm. Are you flexible, so Jake? We're gonna need a concierge to have a room <laughs> key for him on. Call. <laughs> I need a wake up call, <laughs> both emotionally and uh, for the room. I'm gonna need the maid to come and watch and judge my goat. See, <laughs> I just need the concierge to come in and start yelling at me to fix my life. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, uh, I I'm very flexible. I used to be able to do uh, some splits back in the day. For who? That's a lot. <laughs> okay. I did. I. When I was a kid, I took karate and I yeah. did. I was doing splits. Then mm-hmm. you got to. It's part yeah. of self defense. I yeah, was yeah. doing splits for the the older man with the ponytail. I've always said nothing weakens a bully like busting it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Plus your perfect height to suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. And that's how you get a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if... Uh, what do you think your wife would say if she walked in on you getting your dick sucked by your bully as he's doing a split? The tables have turned at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tables have turned, so maybe that'll impress her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the assertion of dominance. Yeah, the power dynamic has yeah. shifted. <laughs> Whew, we'll have to figure out what color bandana that is. <laughs> It's a yellow, but it has a stripe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Haircut time, huh? Yeah, baby. Haircut. I bet you didn't know I was getting fresh for you. I can, I can use it. Doesn't seem completely necessary. I need to be Damn, shaved. Are you telling him to skip his haircut right now? Look at him. You think uh, that guy gonna, needs a haircut? I like to be shaved. I need a haircut. He's going to be shorter on the sides than he already is? Yes. You're plenty. You're only a two on the sides. I want to be a one, baby. Oh my god, he likes it. Likes it tight. Mm-hmm. Number one. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to add anything before we go? I think I've added too much to begin with. <laughs> no, you can never add enough, Jake. Um, so no, just follow me at Jake Material on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, I'm doing that King's Highway show nice. in May. I think it's uh, May the first Thursday. I think. Oh yeah, the second. So that'll be fun. It was just the highway before you got booked on it, Jake. Oh, man. Did you hear that, John? Scoop. We're going to have fun. I might bring the crown. Who knows? You look great with facial hair. Oh. Keep it, man. Yeah. He's not saying it as a joke. All right. Thank you. Take a compliment. We thank like you. It. We like it. All right. It'll stay for mm-hmm. at least another day. You look like a deadliest catch fisherman. What I catch? <laughs> what I catch? Uh, a little crab. HPV. <laughs> dick crabs. Speaking of dick crabs, what's on your mind? Hey, y'all, I'm Krabby Dicks, the dick crabber. Follow me on Instagram <clears throat> at Johnny Delco and Twitter as well. Thanks. Uh. Yeah, follow me at Mike Rainey 82 on all social media. You can check out all the shows that I have coming up. A bunch of them are with these guys. Uh, Friday night. Well, the show sold out. I shouldn't even tell people about this now. Shit. Yeah, Shit. but we look forward to seeing all of you guys in Boston. Friday night, April 5th. It's the 5th, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one of the days. Yeah, yeah and then April 6th, we're going to be in Hartford, Connecticut. There's, I think, like 15 tickets left for that. So grab those bad boys. We'll see you there. That's how I have it saved in my phone. Our show. It was a. I have it marked as another city. Ah, uh, okay. I just never. Cha- I never updated it. Very exciting. We're coming to Chicago late May too. So May twenty fifth and twenty sixth, we sold out the first two shows. We added a third show. So that's in in my link. It'll be in the link description for this episode and also my social medias at Mike Rainey eighty two. Check that out if you're watching this episode on Patreon. Thank you for being a patron, and uh, thank you for allowing us to do all the fun shit that we do. If you're not a patron yet, please consider it. You can do that by going to patreon.com slash Stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. You get every episode early. You get the episodes ad-free. We're doing live streams just about every week that are just for patrons. We're, you get first access at all of our travel videos, all of our book club videos, all of our movie watch-alongs. Any extra shit we do goes up on Patreon. We promise you something extra every week. So that's four bucks a month, or you could just pay forty bucks for the year. That covers everything. That's at patreon.com slash little stinkers. But yeah, on behalf of uh our dear friend Jeff Simmons, Jacob Furman and Matera, and John Del Calo, thank you for watching with us and we'll see you next time. We love you so much. Goodbye. Till next time. <laughs> There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Mail stinkers.